Are we live? We are live. Good evening, everyone, and welcome. This is Twist Gaming, where you get to play board games with us. But not today! Today, this is going to be our Tanzan stream, where we're talking about stuff. And things. And we're just going to go on tangents all stream long, because that's the name of the game here. But first, let's get some introductions out of the way. As usual, I'm Matt. And I'm Josh. And we're Twist Gaming. And we would like to point out that this stream and all of this week's streams are brought to you by Valerian, the Alpha Missions by Ultra Pro. Yeah. We had the opportunity of doing the Spotlight stream of that on Monday, so if you haven't had a chance, go check that out. Had a lot of fun with that. Ryan was a blast. Yes. Uh, two thumbs up from both of us, I think, right? Yeah. So introductory here this is our first tangent stream ever and tangents has kind of been the loving nickname that we've given to our pre-stream before where we go on tangents. random tangents about just everything whether everything. it be food music what we're doing in life board games whatever and it's just calculating the difference between a hundred duck a hundred horse uh, duck sized horses versus one horse sized duck. duck and seeing which is more terrifying in a mathematical sense in a mathematical sense. Um, so this is just a way to just get a little bit more insight as to who we are and for us to interact with you guys because we really love you guys. And it's just fun. Yeah. It's a lot of fun. So we're going to kind of chat, like, dictate this a little, like, to Dr start this off. Drive the direction of the tangents. And, and then it's just going to go into tangents because that's what we do. Mm -hmm. Um so it's funny. I was go Googling before if there was a board game named Tangents. Nope. Nope. I, I, not I mean, that I know be, of. There might be. You always you always find the duck size ones. Okay. So Gibberam, we we did a little calculation here, and yes, I originally the horse sized duck seems absolutely terrifying, but after doing a little bit of math, I and believe physics? we and <laughs> physics we we found out that the duck sized horses would weigh about 125 pounds each. So if you could imagine like a hundred and twenty five pound duck ramming into your ankles, yes, there's a hundred of them. You can get like one or two good hits on them, but they're gonna take you out, especially if they work in some sort of semblance of teamwork. Yeah. Um, and then the, the the giant sized duck horse would not really be able to move. So excellent. We're keeping the the relative density of what they are. Yeah. So it's it's not a perfect, you know equation for scaling them but yeah. it, it leads to an interesting conversation because i think the horse sized duck only weighs like 500 600 pounds i thought it was heavier than that I don't, I don't know i don't remember which stream that was or how long ago that, that was, was a long it was a long time ago. ago but yeah no um that this is what tangents is a 120 pound pound duck is like the size of a large dog for comparison yeah so like imagine you had a great dane density wise but shrunken down into the size of a like a large duck still so even a goose imagine if a goose weighed 100 geese are mean as geese are mean as fuck, fuck geese yeah geese are assholes <laughs> so funny story back in high school uh i lived in, like kind of next to a, a creek canal whatever you want to call it okay. and a friend of mine lived in the same neighborhood about four or five streets down but along the same canal yeah and so i had a couple people over my house after school and they decided they were going to come over and hang out. And so I, I gave them a call. And as they're coming, all of a sudden, they start screaming. And I just hear in the background, honk, honk, honk. <laughs> Apparently, there was a goose on the canal. And they got a little too close. And the goose just started going after them. And they got the shit scared out of them. They, they, they booked it. They got out you of there. You know what else is also really, they're really mean? Besides geese? Swans. I mean, they're like the same thing-ish, aren't like, they? No, are swans bigger? I think swans are bigger. They so, might be bigger. So I don't know if you've ever been to like New York delis. I've been to Carnegie Deli. But like, and I've been you, to Katz's You go to a New York deli and they give you a bag of bread to leave. Like as a bribe, they're like, here, take this bread and leave this restaurant so you can sit someone else down or something. I don't know. Uh. They give you like a bag of bread. Um, and as this kid, we would take the bread, go to the park across the street and feed the ducks. Mm -hmm. And uh, there, there was a swan there, and all the ducks kind of swarmed us, and it was freaking scary as hell. And then we realized we read all the signs that say "Do not feed the ducks." Yeah, as we're getting attacked, and we threw the bag of bread and ran into our <laughs> car. <laughs> it was really scary. <laughs> Geese could be the MMA, yeah. So, what New York delis have you been to, Josh? Uh, you can easily outrun the duck size horse. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah that, that was the other hell. thing. But the thing is that there'd be a hundred of them. So I'm assuming that. Like you're walking down an alley 
And then you're surrounded by like. A well, gang I think I think he was saying like the the horse sized duck. So that's the one. So you can just run away from the big one. Oh, the horse sized duck. Yeah, like. Yeah, waddles. Yeah. Good waddle. Um, I've been like, shit. I I lived in New York, so like every city had its own diner. So like, no, Massive diners people. and delis are different things, though. I meant to say deli a diner. Sorry. Oh, okay. New York diner. Gotcha. Did I, if I said deli, I am sorry. Yeah. Um, I, diners. Yeah, diners are good. So. Last time I was New York here, diners are like yeah. the bomb. Even the worst ones are good. Yeah. Down here, not so much. Like diners are okay. No, yeah. Like here we have Lester's and that's the only decent diner down here, I think. It's okay. Rampwood across the street from me is okay. It's okay. Yeah. Uh, um Deli wise though, like I so new uh, diner wise rather, I was in um New York a few months back and I had uh lunch at the diner that they filmed a bunch of the scenes from Goodfellas in. Okay. That was pretty cool. The place was a real dump. And it's in the middle of a real industrial complex area in Queens. Yeah. Uh, my dad just happened to used to work right around the corner from there back when he lived there. So he knew the area. And like he's like, every time we saw the movie, he's like, I know exactly where that diner is. It's around the corner from where I used to work. But it's literally warehouses. And then there's just a random diner in the middle of this cross-section street area. Yeah. But that's New York for you. Yeah, New York's got weird stuff everywhere. This is one hotel we always wind up staying at. And I don't understand why. It's in Queens, and it's a dumpy hotel, and literally half the rooms overlook a cemetery. <laughs> My family loves to stay there, and I don't know why. It's not like a La Quinta. Like, this, the, like the cemetery view. Yeah, pretty much. I stayed at a hotel in West Virginia. That was, uh, that claimed to be haunted. Was it? I don't know. There was nothing. The, so the town closed at like 4 p.m. So there was nothing to do. That's weird. It was just like this. It was like this little nowhere town. That kind of reminds me. Like John, uh, he was on stream a few times. He was on stream during our Halloween stream yep. last year. Mysterium. Uh, Mysterium. Yeah, and he uh, he went to Salem for Halloween. Yeah. He says it's very weird. Like it's it's a super traditional town, but they've got a couple of hokey things where they embrace the weird. But the town mostly closes at like six or seven at night. Yeah. So um. Yeah. So we're in this little town where everything closes at like four. Yeah. The only thing to do was to go to Walmart because that Walmart. was the only thing open. Yeah, never closed. You know what was outside Walmart? Mm. A woman with her pet raccoon. Oh, was it on a leash. Yeah. Hmm. It was really fat. That's cute. <laughs> Chubby raccoons are cute. I remember, so we had a raccoon problem at my house when I was living with my parents. And it was right when one of our dogs died. Yeah. And so we didn't have a dog, and the raccoons decided then this was a prime opportunity to break onto the porch and just fuck shit up. So we put out a raccoon trap. So, and we so put, the like, porch where the birds are? Yeah. Did they, they try to fuck up the birds? Uh, they, I think one of the birds did get fucked up. Okay. They were going after the bird seed, too. But... Um, we put a raccoon trap outside, you know, a, a, a humane one. It's the one where it just locks them in the cage. Yeah. And we put the, the like a can of cat food in there okay. to, to lure them in. And we caught, honestly, we caught probably about 12 raccoons throughout like a two month period. Okay. And we would take them to the local, um, like nature preserve, yeah. you know, Markham Park. Yeah. So we would take them there and release them. But one raccoon, I remember, got into the cage and he was so fat. <laughs> That he just he <laughs> filled the cage, so it's just <laughs> fur sticking out of all of the holes in the wire mesh cage. Yeah, and I'm like, oh my god, this guy's huge! So I go and I pick up the like the cage. I'm carrying it. And I'm like, I'm like <laughs> waddling a little bit because it's so heavy. And then all of a sudden he starts freaking out. <laughs> and so like he's like he's bashing around the cage, and it's amazing because he's got nowhere to move in the cage. So I put it down, and he literally. <laughs> Forces the door open on the cage and <laughs> runs out and turns around and goes, <laughs> and then just books it. And it's my goodness. Uh, I actually have a bloodhound now. That's we got a bloodhound after that, and laziest dog ever. But she loves <laughs> yes. howling at raccoons. You you babysat her one time. Yeah. A smelly dog, right? <laughs> yes, a smelly dog. <laughs> the the problem with uh, bloodhounds is they've got overactive sweat glands, or not sweat glands, but adrenal glands, or something like that. They smell horrible. 
<laughs> raccoon was thinking, I'll come back and murder you. Yeah, the raccoon was not happy with me. But you know what was worse than the raccoon? What? Was a, uh, a possum. Possums are dicks. So the raccoons, whenever we let the raccoons out in the park, we yeah. open the cage door, and they just all, like, run off or waddle off, depending on how fat yeah. they are. <laughs> but the possum, we opened it up, and he just sat there. Because <laughs> he plays dead. Like, no, he didn't play dead. He just sat there. Like, Fuck <laughs> you. I don't want to go. And then, like, you kick the cage a little bit to try and scare him out, and he just looks back at you. He's like, no, I don't want to go. <laughs> So I we had I had gloves on like gardening gloves because yeah. I don't want to get bit by the damn thing. No, because in my head I'm like, oh, possums have rabies. Apparently, possums are immune to rabies. Oh, are they? So possums, I think their blood temperature is too cold for rabies to sustain in their blood in their bloodstream. Okay. Random. Still fact. don't want to get bit by one. Random fact of the evening. But so I I picked up the back end of the cage and I'm holding it upside down. <laughs> so he would just like plop out and he's just holding on and he's just sitting there hissing at me. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I'm shaking him like, get the fuck out of the cage, go away. I wonder if a squirt bottle would work, uh, like water. I, I don't know, but this was about 10 minutes of me coaxing this damn possum out of the cage. It was, and then finally he, he plops out of the cage. He lands on the ground, he turns back and he stares at me and he starts like hissing at me some more and then he just slowly walks <laughs> off. Like, I, I've never seen an animal with such attitude before. Honey badger don't give a fuck. Pretty much. Speaking of honey badger, what Hogwarts house are you? I have no fucking idea. You didn't take the Pottermore quiz? <sighs> I feel like you should take the Pottermore quiz. Give me your phone. It's it's you have to create an account. It's a whole thing. It's a whole thing now. It's a whole thing. Um it tells you what your Patronus is. It tells you your house. It tells you what wand you should no, have. No, I, I don't think I've ever taken that. Yeah. I read I read the first four books, and then I stopped because I got bored. <sighs> I, I didn't care anymore. Dude, I liked... Um, Josh, take the Pottermore quiz. <laughs> um, <laughs> Josh, take the it, quiz. What's his name? What's his uncle's name that's in jail? Sirius. Yeah, I like Sirius. He was my favorite character, and then, like... I'm actually a Hufflepuff. I'm a Hufflepuff. Jigglypuff? No, I'm a Hufflepuff. Take the quiz on stream. Do it for us. Oh my god! You have a All week right. to take the quiz. No, he's gonna he's gonna set up the computer. Do it on stream now. I'm gonna do it on stream. Uh, I don't remember what my Patronus was. I think it was something decent. I want to say it was like an owl. Oh Matt, I just got an invitation to watch the live stream that you're uh, watching earlier. Uh, but no, yeah, I'm a I'm a Hufflepuff. All right, so uh, we'll, we'll I read this funny thing online though. What? Where it was, Hufflepuffs had the best idea. Helga Hufflepuff was the creator of the house. So he had the best idea. You put all the, the crazy, like, try-hard jocks in one house. That's Gryffindor. You put all the emo bratty kids in one house, Slytherin. You put all the nerds that are trying too hard in Ravenclaw. And then the, all the chill kids are in Hufflepuff. And then the Hufflepuff dorm room is right next to the kitchen. It's like, hey, bro, you want to hang out? We got some food over there. We're just going to chill, have a good time. You know, it's cool. Mad at a Hufflepuff? I don't believe he's not a Slytherin. I'm not a Slytherin. I am a much nicer person in real life than playing games. Lies. Oh, come on. <laughs> 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 Sign in. We already know Josh is from the Sith house. Or uh, at least that's what the headmaster Gandalf <laughs> told me. <laughs> so what am I doing? The Pottermore. Yeah. So you talk for a second. I'm gonna I'm gonna pull up mine. I just want to see what my stuff is, because there's also the American Hogwarts houses, but I don't really care. What are the American Hogwarts houses? What the hell are those? So there's an American wizarding institution. They talk about it in the Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find the movie, but uh, make sure the computer's not gonna restart with the Windows updates. Windows uh, updates. Trying to make someone nerd rage again. Uh, some people are just lesser and have only the virtues of one. Um, Matt, we need to hang out some days. Are you going to come to any of the cons, Daphne? Come to some of the cons. Okay, hold on. Where do I sign into this damn thing? I don't know. I, it's, my computer it's is acting really it's slow. It's mobile. It's just I don't know where it goes with the mobile. Login. Here we go. Uh, American. Uh, there's an American wizarding school. 
uh, what the hell is it called? Excuse me. New Hogwarts? No. Uh, I still think it's the Dice Archon. What is it called? Because there's Bow Battens, that's the French. Hogwarts is British. There's Durmstrang, which is like the Turkish one, I guess. I don't know. Um, Salem? No, Salem? it's not Salem. Oh, man. Someone, someone in chat put it. I don't remember what the hell it is. It's it's a weird. But if you name. go to Universal, it's it's Hogwarts. See, look, it's, it's I'm a Badger. I'm a Hufflepuff. <sighs> Join Pottermore. See, I'm a Hufflepuff. It's green screening really horribly. It has some Irish name for the American one, maybe Ilvermorny. There we go. See Ilvermorny. So my Hogwarts house is, I'm I'm a I'm a Hufflepuff. You probably know that some of Hufflepuff's most renowned members include Nymphadora Tonks and Cedric Diggory. Uh, but did you know that Hufflepuff's house ghost, the Fat Friar, still resents the fact that he was never made a cardinal, or that the Hufflepuff, or that Hufflepuff has produced the fewest dark wizards of any house at Hogwarts? Here you can discover more about your beloved house through the blah blah blah. I don't care. I do not want to sign up for your newsletter. Green screening sounds slithered to me. Um, I am oh, a. Please verify my email. I'm a Thunderbird in the Ilvermorny house. Thundercats. Uh. Apparently, that means I favor adventure. So, there's that. Uh, my Patronus. What do you think my Patronus is? All right. Oh, that's lame. I've got a lame Patronus. <laughs> my Patronus is a magpie. Well, read the questions out loud, Josh. Forrester River. This is this is really, like... Let's answer the damn question. Forest. But, like, the select thing's annoying. Yeah, it's weird. My my Patronus is a magpie. Late at night, walking alone down the street, you hear a particular cry that you believe to have magical source. Do you proceed with caution, keeping one hand on your concealed wand and eye out for any disturbance? That sounds that dirty. <laughs> Draw your wand and try to discover the source of the noise. Draw your wand and stand your ground. Withdraw into the shadows to await development while mentally reviewing the most appropriate defense and offensive spells should trouble occur. Remember to answer honestly there, Josh. Uh, I'm going to draw my wand and try to discover the source of the noise. So just so you know, my wand is fir wood made with a dragon heartstring core, hard flexibility, and 13, you have a furry wand? And 13 and a quarter inch in length. I have a very long wand. H how wide is it, though? Well, it's, it's all about the girth. It, no, it's not about <laughs> the girth. Are you using some polyjose person to pretend to be? Eh. If I remember right, my Patronus was a swan or a, oh, so you got a mean Patronus. Uh, which of the following do you find most difficult to deal with? Hunger, cold. I love the cold. Loneliness, boredom, mm. being ignored. Hunger. I get hangry. <laughs> uh, hangry, Josh. I mean, nothing aside from the dark wizard can ever threaten a full-grown wizard, except for a goose. If you if you could have any power, which would you choose? The power to read Everyone's minds. Like, Damn it, Josh! What? <laughs> Girthy wands. <laughs> oh, did, did you ever listen to uh, Dear Wizard People? No. Uh, dear, dear readers. I don't know. Uh, it's a guy. He just uh, he does a voice overlay of the whole Harry Potter movie, mm -hmm. and it's hilarious. Oh, you showed me the first one, I remember, one time. And I remember yeah. we had people here, and they got really angry about it just going on and on and on for forever. <laughs> so good, though. <laughs> the power to remind, the power of invincibility, invisibility. invisibility, the power of superhuman strength, the power to speak to animals, the power to change the past, Ooh. the power to change your appearance as well. I, I mind reading powers. Fuck yeah. Like, yeah. Is, is that like a choice? I mean, I th I think I agree with you. Mind reading powers is probably the best there because you can know exactly how to read a situation. Yeah, I feel like that's the best. Uh, like animals, like uh, mind reading. Would your mind reading powers work on animals? I mean, they have minds. I know. Maybe they just think in squirrel. I mean, you might or whatever. You might just feel their emotions. It might be an empath, hmm. kind of like mantis. So I I'm gonna go power your minds. Uh, how would you? Like to be known to history, the wise, the good, the great, the bold. Mm. Want some sweet Harry Potter fan fiction? H.P. Moore is the best. 
Forget mind reading powers. That's awful. That logo, you nerds. Fucking tangent, Zan. Fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the great. <coughs> yeah. <laughs> I just killed Matt. Oh, God. If you're in Hogwarts, which pet would you choose to take with you? Tabby Cat. Oh, there's five billion choices here. There's a lot of choices here. Tabby Cat. Siamese Cat. Ginger Cat. Black Cat. White Cat. Tiny Owl. Tawny. Screech Owl. Brown Owl. owl. Snowy, Snowy Owl. owl. Barn Owl. owl. Common Toad. Yeah. Natter Jack Toad? Natter what the hell is that? I would like to talk to a cat and ask why they are that way. <laughs> That's just how they are. A Dragon Toad. Harlequin, Harlequin toad. toad. Three Toad Tree Toad. How can I go with... I would take Lucy with me to piss off people. Black so cat. Black cat. See, I think I picked Siamese cat there because I had a really awesome Siamese cat growing up. Siamese cats. So I was reading something recently that Siamese cats are very vocal. Yeah, Steve was really vocal. His name was Steve. It's not a pony, Josh. Don't vote for Kappa. Ferret, of course. I, there was no ferret there option. Was no ferret option. But I had a Siamese slash house cat mix that his name was Steve, and he was the clumsy. You cat enter out. an enchanted garden. What would you be? What would you be most curious to examine first? The silver leaf tree, barren golden apples. That sounds boring. Cat snake is best cat. Yeah, that is true. I do have two of them. Uh, the fat red toadstool that appears to be talking to each other. Maybe that sounds interesting. Bubble pool in the depths of which something luminous is swirling. It's actually an old wizard with a sparkly, twinkly eye. Strangely uh, twinkling eye. I don't care. I'm going to talk to the fat red toadstools. Wait, you had a Siamese cat called Steve, not something regal, but just Steve. Yeah, his name was just Steve. <laughs> 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 Left or right? Um, uh, he was actually... So the, the funny thing about Steve was... We ha oh, you're Ravenclaw. Ravenclaw, apparently. Josh is Ravenclaw. Kaka. Um, Kaka. Show us the cat snakes. I can go grab a cat snake. Not, not yet. Not yet. You got what's your Patronus? <sighs> I want to see what your Patronus is. I'm surprised that you're. Uh, I I'm surprised you're Ravenclaw. I thought you would have been a the nerds? Yeah, you're a nerd. I, that's true. I am a nerd. And I'm not. And I'm more of a Hufflepuff. You're more of a bro than a nerd, apparently. No, that's not a bro. I'm not shocked <laughs> that Josh is very glad. Okay, so hold on a second. I'm going to go get a refill. So, Joshua. Discover my Patronus or my wand? Ew. Guys, I have a serious question. What's scarier, Josh's face or an octopus with eyes all over except for the bottom oh right in the unicycle? Matt is a Chad. Oh, I'm just I'm just awkwardly waiting for you to come back. Make good choices, Matt. Put a condom on your head. I said make good choices. Put a condom on your head. You gotta protect the horn. You gotta protect your wand, Matt. So what am I doing next? My Patronus or my wand? I'm more curious about your Patronus. So let's do your wand next. Welcome to Mumbling with Josh! <laughs> and you know what? I don't know if you're watching, but there. I mean, she's probably watching. Or she could just be listening. Nah, that's dumb. She was supposed to be going to the Boy Scouts tonight. She might be done with that, though. Better with headphones. No. It's just background music. Your beverage looks purple. My beverage is purple because it's Purple Haze. Oh, oh there's music. Purple oh. Haze, music. Purple Haze. <laughs> Let's see, it's still dirty, though. Oh, my word. The Patronus is kind of a positive force, a projection of the very thing that the Demetors feed upon, hope, happiness, and desire to survive. Oh, your Patronus is an otter? That's also Hermione's Patronus. I played blackjack with Hermione. Do you know that, Josh? Mm -hmm. I know you know that. I told you. You can only try once. These questions are timed. Go with your instincts. Oh, this is timed. I don't know if I have a chance to read these. Relax. Think of your happiest memory. Happiest memory. It's a really shitty forest. Actually, I'm going to be really sad when he learns how to pronounce Sebastian. Shine, glitter, glow. We're going to shine like a diamond. Shine bright like a diamond. Shine bright like a diamond. This is like Nintendo 64 graphics. Oh, Matt has to be out of his best Make or improve. Now. We're fucking going to improve. 
I'm always on my best behavior, Anne. I don't know what you're talking about. Play, prowl, or preen? Play. Yeah, well, I was at the premiere of Disney's Tarzan movie. Take that, you blackjacker. Sta. Matt knows Sta. Sia. Sia. Matt knows Sia. There we go. What was that? Your picture is trying to form. Don't give up. I mean, it's a Sia song, but didn't Rihanna cover it more famously? Who or why? Uh, Why? No consideration for the children. It's forming. It's forming. Oh, no. It's getting bigger. Josh. No. Please put it back in your pants, Matt. No, goodness, Josh. Black, white, gray. Um, let's go gray. I'm convinced Matt can't be on his best behavior because he's always plotting something. That's actually accurate. It's accurate. Uh, yeah. It's true. Not going to even argue with that. Uh, Click and drag. To release for your Patronus. Click, drag, and release for your Patronus. What's your Patronus, Josh? Uh, bunny. A wild, wild rabbit. rabbit. Josh's Patronus is a royal rabbit. Josh got Ravenclaw. Surprisingly. I don't know why. He got a rabbit, though. I'm a magpie. Rabbit's cooler than magpie. What's your wand? Um, It's wide and girthy. <sighs> <laughs> oh, your wand's longer than mine, Stephanie? Mine's 13 and a quarter. It's no fair. Ravenclaw is best claw. All right. To ensure we find Ravenclaw the perfect wand for you, claw. it's very important that you answer the following questions honestly. First of all, would you describe yourself as average height? Short. Tall. Uh, average. Anne's wand is long and girthy, too. Maybe. Oh, wow. The computer? Or Matt click Playing it. with bottle caps. Because I've got three. Here. And your eyes... Um, dark brown black. Uh, let me see your eyes. Yeah, it's fine. Which was the day you were born? An even number. Do you pride your, do you pr most pride yourself on your kindness, optimism, kegels, <laughs> determination, <laughs> resilience, <laughs> imagination, kegels, intelligence, originality. I'm a split between Ravenclaw. I feel like I'd be a split between Ravenclaw and Hufflepuff. To be completely honest. I'm going to go with imagination because I'm the idea guy. No, no, you're not. Yeah, I make the ideas. I I'm know, not the word guy. Oh, no. I know you guys are short now. I can no longer take it. Who's short? Who's short? How tall do you think we are? Josh is actually eight foot four. Uh, <laughs> travel alone. Uh, travel alone down a deserted road. Deserted. You reach a crossroad. Do you continue left towards the sea? Head towards the forest. Right towards the castle. I'd probably go towards the sea. I did not say I was average height. 5'10? Josh said he was average height. So I don't, I like, I'm 5'10. We actually don't have legs. We're just torsos. Yeah, we're really just torsos. Yeah. We're just I'm a 5'10 like, torso. That's, <laughs> you've got a really <laughs> long torso then. Like, I'm not really in a chair. My, uh, my torso just goes to the floor. <laughs> <laughs> Do you fear most fire? <laughs> no. <sighs> Darkness? Nope. Isolation? Nope. Small spaces? Um, so far the most. Heights. I'm going to go small spaces. I think I picked fire or heights there. I'm not sure which one. They are Muppets. <laughs> we were talking about getting I Muppets. Picture us now, though, as the grumpy old man Muppets that they have in the, the, the balcony section of the theater where they're just like raining down snarky comments the entire We'd time. We'd be great newscasters. Hi, everyone. Welcome to this game. And a chest of magical artifacts? Is that how you spell artifacts? Uh, artifacts. No. <laughs> but Is that's that, what that an English spelling of artifacts? <laughs> Baby? A-R-T-E-F-A-C-T-S? That's weird. That is odd. Uh, uh, which would you choose? The Ornate mirror? No, I don't care. Dusty bottle? Dusty bottle. I don't need a dusty bottle. The golden key. Maybe the golden key. The shilva daga. I could stab a person with that. The bound scroll. A scroll? The glittering jewel. Or the black glove. I think it's the black glove. Why are you going to pick the, you're the OJ Simpson? 
I'm gonna slap someone. Sycamore wood with a un. Of course, you're the unicorn. Yeah, I got you going to haircore. And 12 inch and surprisingly swishy flexibility. <laughs> swishy flexibility. That means your wand's like swishy. It's not firm. You've got a semi flaccid wand. <laughs> <laughs> A 12-inch semi-flaccid. I could share my wand with the world, Matt. You could. You could. What's your... I don't really care, but what's your Ilvermorny house? I don't... I really don't care about that one. You could be... I feel like you're probably a Puckwudgie, and I don't know what it is or what it means, but it's just funny to say Puckwudgie. Lewd (laughs) floppy. (laughs) You've got a floppy wand. (laughs) Flop, 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 flop. Oh, goodness me, oh my. Uh, there's yeah, there's too much text there. Why is there all this text? Oh, my God. People probably don't know what the hell over read this. I just don't care enough. I didn't get my owl, so I'm just, I'm butthurt about it, so I don't care. He got his Patronus already, and you're not paying attention. He got a wild rabbit. Puckwudgie is the one with the dick little troll guys. That Yeah, that's right. They're kind of like semi-gremlins, right? Did I click the wrong link? You probably clicked, clicked the wrong link. link. I don't fucking know. Uh, I, I, oh, you clicked read about it. I don't want to read about it. Then it's like, are you sure you don't want to read about it? Read about it. I got Thunderbird, which means Do you I'm prefer to remember adventure. or forget? Experience. Um, remember. You're not paying attention to us, so that's fine. Um, Wild that's rabbit. I'm a magpie. Um, Aren't magpies dicks? I feel like magpies are dicks. I am stronger when I know I'm right. I'm always right, though. With my comrades? Eh. Fuck you guys. Enthusiastic? <laughs> <laughs> awake? I mean, I am stronger when I'm awake without I'm asleep. It. Are you woke? <laughs> or alone? I'm, I'm going to go up awake. Oh, that's right. Magpies like shiny things. They steal shiny things. They're like the barracudas of the sky. Why? Why? Why not? Of course. Because I want to? Stupid question. We may never know. I feel like your answer would be because I want to. Or no, why not? Or no, probably because I want yeah, to. Yeah, because I want to. Yeah. Bird nest soup. All right. My magic is inborn, in need of work, unique. I believe it's pronounced uniqu. Powerful. It's going to be unique. Of course you are. Because you're a special unicorn. What jinx would you least like to experience? A jinx that meant nothing was funny? Oh, that's boring. That's horrible. That is horrible. Like, my life is comedy. I mean, that's true. (laughs) A jinx that made all food taste like straw? Oh, fuck that. A jinx that kept you constantly awake? I'm okay with that. I'd be more productive then. Yeah, a jinx that played music constantly in your head? As long as it's good music, that's fine. (laughs) Uh, A jinx that struck you dumb. Soto Beach says, I love both of you. Well, we love you too. At least we think we do. Uh, A jinx that forced you to tell the truth. I don't know. Liar, liar. Uh, If nothing was funny again, that would would be miserable. A miserable life. Um, Think of a question you would most like answered by a person or or an an all knowing -knowing being or device. device. Which of the following most closely resembles the answer you'd like to hear without a shadow of a doubt? So this is in response to the question you'd ask. Never? Very soon? It is impossible? Yes? I will show you everything. That's naughty. Only if you agree. That sounds naughty, too. Uh, To be honest, Twist Gaming is the only place I come to see playthroughs previews. Oh, thank you. If you come with me... I hope you enjoy tangents. No, I didn't. Yes, you are. <laughs> you are. Yes, you may. Only once. If you want to. Forever. Not for many years. You would like the Thestrals, and You obviously asked something NP hard to prove they wrong. This is a playthrough of life inside Josh's head at the moment. Uh, um, I don't really know what my question would be, so that makes this hard. Giggity. Um, no, I have a floppy wand. <laughs> <laughs> Surprisingly sweet. I will show you everything. Guys, best game you played 
in the past year. So stay tuned for our stream anniversary yeah. because we will be answering that question with consequences. Rewards? Rewards. Okay. I don't think we're going to be like... What are rewards but beneficial consequences? Sure. I feel like that was deep. I rated dirty. Kind of. I value freedom, individuality, service, ambition, freedom. Freedom! No curse can work without the victim's secret consent. What? That's weird. Oh, kind of rapey. Like, yeah. Like. Uh, what is the shortest string that hashes to itself in SHA-256? I don't know. Also, how did you get into this business? What was your route to this level? Uh, so, Soto Beast, to be completely honest, the route to this level was we really enjoyed playing Kingdom Death a lot. And, and we wanted to play it more. We wanted to play it more, and we felt like it would be real. So, we, like, Twitch Plays Pokemon was just crescendoing in the lexicon of pop culture. Yeah, it, it was a little, yeah. It was a little older, but. Oh, you're Thunderbird, too. We're yeah, I'm Thunderbird. Thunderbirds. Thunder Buddies. Um. But we decided that it would be kind of cool to uh, make it interactive. <laughs> uh, saucy Bukaka, I'm sorry. Bukaki. Bukaki. Um. Uh, um. I'm just going to time you out for once. It's your warning. That's your first warning. Keep it PG-13, please. Do you think we'll see an updated offline picture? It's from Pathfinder, which we haven't seen in a long time. Yep, maybe. That's maybe. a good question. I don't know. You have to come up with something. Let's commission a new artist. If any of you are artists, let us know, and uh, maybe we can incorporate it. Maybe. Um. Oh right, IRL. Yeah. Yeah, it yeah. happens. Um. But yeah, we wanted to play more uh interactive style board games with uh, you guys, just because we thought it would be really interesting. And the more we played, the more we realized there's. I mean, Josh knew more than I did. I was fairly noob in the board gaming industry. Uh, but we, we realized how many games were actually coming out on a yearly, monthly, weekly basis, yeah. and we just thought it'd be interesting to show off these games for people, just because a lot of them don't have the coverage that they should have. Yeah. Um, and there is a lack of... There isn't a lack of reviews. Like, right. everybody and their mom do, does reviews. Right. I mean, that's fair, though, because yeah. everyone's entitled to their opinion. Yeah. But um, playthroughs are... Uh, so, Soda Beast, I'm a marketing guy. I work in marketing. I love board games, but I'm worried about being able to make a living. What can you tell me? Yeah. It's going to be extraordinarily hard to make a living doing this. So, so board games, unless you're working for one of the big companies, like, yeah, there isn't much. Like, look for Wizard, Hasbro, technically the same company, but they run them apart asthma day but like yeah you're not gonna be there's a few people that we know of that doubled down and tried to make it their full-time job and it's very they, difficult they can, they can, but they're doing well there's people that do it as their full-time job but um point point is if it's your full-time job you're not gonna make a lot of money at it right compared to if you're a marketing guy and if you went somewhere else doing it like you, you, you probably make almost double like but if it's a uh quality of living thing that you're looking for not necessarily yeah. money then it would be an opportunity for you yeah um so like just to give you guys preference so matt and i are both engineers yeah. matt is a mechanical engineer i am a software engineer so we do make very good salaries on our day jobs and this is something we get to do to have fun and the money we make, we don't really make money because so yeah, we take all the money that we get yeah. to help fund this and go to shows and do things like that. So we started, uh, May is going to be our two-year anniversary in streaming. Yeah. And I can tell you that every cent that we've made made off of the stream has not seen either of our pockets. Yet nope. we've invested a nice amount of money into it. Yeah, no. Um, uh, so it's it's finally getting to the point where the, the stream is being able to care for itself. Yeah, and, we're and we might actually get paid back for the money we put into the stream. Maybe. Maybe. Um, so I, I don't want you guys to think that we're here to just chill money out of the, the experience. Yeah. Uh, we're here because we like it. And if the stream can support itself, that's 
very good for us. Yeah, and, and that's where the stream's been for the most part. Yeah, it, is it has got to a point where it can support us, and especially with help with the sponsors and all our viewers and all our subscribers. Yeah. Um, we've got to a point where, um, yeah, it, it's can maintain that we can actually go do these cons and give you coverage there and, and meet you guys, which is cool too. Um, oh yeah, we love meeting. Like so, Naobari, you just commented there, uh, but we've met Naobari what two, three times now in person, at least two, possibly mm -hmm. three. I don't remember. Yeah, camera exorcisms are expensive. <laughs> yes, that is true. Maybe be able to buy a non-possessed camera. You know, the funny thing is, this is one of the more expensive cameras that we have that we've had. Twice, Star Star and Gen Con. Um. Really, all, the camera just the remote gets all wonky. I don't I know why. And it's like it's been pointing at the camera all, all night, but it hasn't done it. I'll give them equipment purchase. I mean, I already have ideas for the next few oh, purchases. Yeah. yeah, we do. Uh, I actually showed Josh something yesterday. Today was that today? Yeah, that was early today. No, uh, we want to get new lights just to make them more portable, yeah. so we can take them to the shows. I think the lights are purchase number next. Number next. And a solid state hard drive for the computer. That's probably on the same level as the lights. Oh yeah, because the solid states. It, the yeah. hard drive is loud there. Uh, just come to one of the cons. Yep. Go to Spiel sometime. We're looking at going to Spiel sometime soon. Maybe next year. Maybe Who next. Knows. Not this year. Next year, maybe. I want to go to Germany. Yeah. I have. I've got to go to Vienna Schnitzel. Um, but no, like my new job. Hopefully, is gonna be very flexible with me going to the cons and stuff and, and we're, we're still gonna have that i love you guys and to be honest you guys are an inspiration to me keep doing what you're doing thank you soda beast that's awesome and that's thank a you that's so a much, soda giveaway beast. that's a giveaway we're gonna be doing a giveaway tonight yeah that's fantastic so soda beast you just tipped uh, uh pushed us over the next tip giveaway so josh is gonna be setting up a giveaway this evening uh we will put the link in the chat uh, for you guys to go ahead and enter and we're gonna give you guys some free stuff so soda beast big thank you to you you are the deciding factor there, so woo! Uh, but Josh is going to tell us in just one second what the giveaway is going to be. Remember, if you have Amazon Prime, you've got Twitch Prime, which means you get one free sub every month. And if you are a subscriber, whether it be Twitch Prime or the traditional method, uh, you can go ahead and enter. And the more uh, you, if you're a sub, you get more entries. And the higher tier subs as well get you more entries as well. So definitely go check that out. So uh, the giveaway has been running for like 15 days or something? Yeah, 15 days, 22 hours. No one's entered minutes it. minutes and 37 seconds. Refund giveaway. I don't... Okay. Okay. Can I go? So do beast. All right. Um, tangents giveaway. I don't know what we're giving away, but we're going to give away something. Everyone gets the first tickets free. Do what I get to purchase tickets so too? So what are we announcing to give away? Do I get to purchase tickets too? Of course you do, yeah. man. I mean... If you win, we're going to pick another person. <laughs> yep. But you can purchase all the tickets you want. And subscribers get double luck. Green start. Burr, 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 burr. I'll leave that up for the rest of the stream. All right. So, guys, it's saying you could redeem milligrams of salt. As a reminder, you get milligrams of salt for every minute that you're watching, every bit that you throw, every tip that you do, and if you're a sub as well, you're going to get stuff. So that is the more you watch and stalk us, the more exactly more stuff we give you. Uh, so speaking of tip giveaways, though, it says we're at two oh five. Add eleven dollars and one penny to that uh, because there is one pending tip that uh, did, for some reason didn't get. I need up, to fix the tip up bar, and I haven't had a chance to do it. So we are about what was that five after? So we're sixteen. So we're at eighty four dollars away. Something like that. We're about eighty four dollars away from our next giveaway. So that could happen tonight as well. So definitely go check that out, guys. Uh, if remember, um, I said it earlier, if you have Amazon prime, not only do you have Twitch prime, you can buy $5 worth of bits for 99 cents. Um, and those bits count towards the giveaways. So definitely keep that in mind. Uh, but so do Beast, thank you so much for the kind words, not only the tip, but the kind words also. It really right. does, it means a lot when we get positive feedback from yeah. you guys, just because we do invest a lot of time in this and it, it's nice for you guys to stroke our ego sometimes. I lost all our salt, Matt. Huh? I lost all our salt. Oh, you son of a bitch. Um, so what do you want to give away this evening? Are we talking about like one nice, one big thing? Not one nice thing. One big thing or like several smaller things? Mm, I don't know. Um, hmm. That's a good question. 
I got a lot of stuff to give away. I, I just don't know what. Do you want to give away your dignity? I mean, I do that every stream. Ah, see, I don't have any left. I mean, I the little I, I, I accumulate every day, Yeah. I, I, I just leave it at the stream and go oh, away. Oh, okay. Um, um, question. I don't know. I will pick something. I want to. I want to announce it though, just because I like. There's a we... box of games under that thing. I don't Is know. Is that in it. more games? Yeah, that's more games. That's so many damn games. Yeah, there's games away. everywhere. Uh, for sure, my friends, you guys are the first place I go for game walkthroughs. If you guys haven't put one out, then honestly, the game isn't worth looking at. Oh, that's awesome, Soto. That makes me so happy. Like that really makes me happy when you. This is why I don't believe Matt is a ugly, a awful puff, by the way. <laughs> Wait, what did I do? Okay, so let me go look for games. So Josh, sure. talk to the people. Tell them a funny story and or anecdote. A funny haha story or a funny hee hee story? Funny like a clown, like it amuses you. Um, I'm not going to tell that joke. That joke's way too long and it's inappropriate. Josh goes all in with that dignity and loses it every day. Yep. Um, what was one of your favorite? Oh, uh, that's Anne asking Soto, I think. There's that orphan game. There's yeah, we, could, we could do that. That's fine. Unless you want to give people burning orphans in the expansion, whatever it's called. I'm a guy who puts money on games I haven't played yet, and I come here to see what's good with games nowadays. Put up a poll. All right. Okay. Uh, code names, Marvel. And what was the other one? Hey, Paul, we get to peek into the giveaway warehouse. Um, you guys could pick one of the two games. Um, so Orphan Ashes is the looking for group comic, and then Codenames Marvel because it's Codenames. Um, that's great to hear, NZ Snake. Give me a copy of KDM. Seems totally reasonable. If I had an extra copy, I probably would do a giveaway for it. But yeah. Um, that Codenames clip is great, by the way. What clip? Um, so we have that going on. Um, HQ is live. Uh, we're not going to play HQ, though. Yeah, we have a... So what's coming up on our schedule? So Monday, we have a Court of the Dead Mourner's Call, which is... Um, the Kickstarter for Sideshow um, and Project Raygun, which is part of USAopoly. It's their first Kickstarter. They have that launch on Tuesday, so that's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, Matt and I are going to be taking a look at that this weekend because I haven't had a chance to. Maybe I'll have Matt grab the box so we can take a look at it. Um, then we're going to do Thanos Rising the week after that, which is a direct to, to retail. Um, let me look at the calendar. Matt. You want to grab Court of the Dead? I want to take a look at it. Because... Okay. I like Twist playthrough of Gruff, Rage of the Trolls. That was good. We also we just did the other Gruff the other week. Um, and that actually ends on Kickstarter tomorrow, tonight, soon. So this Helios Expanse, guys. Uh, what's Orphan and Ashes? It's a game where you have to... S you play as one guy who tries to kill all the orphans. and you, Or he plays the good guy to... No, Court of the Dead, the box. It's on the bottom under Helios Expanse, on top of the thing. Uh, any word on PSI stuff? Uh, PhD. No, PS. No, yeah, PSI, sorry. PSI, uh, yeah, starting next month, we should... We should uh, be starting that. Uh, 
They said Tuesday we'll know what like games we're gonna get. So Oh really? Yeah. Um and was just emailing them today, doing a follow up because we haven't heard anything. Um so. Oh that's cool though. I, I wasn't aware of that. I like to hear the good news. And you would have hated Millennium Blades just straight up telling you that like Who? your AP would have and oh yeah, and you, you would have been killed. Yeah, like, you, yeah, there's way too much going on for you. Your ADD would have killed you. Yeah, not that it wasn't a. It's a good game. It's just it <laughs> would have back gruff. But my wife is still angry about KDM. <laughs> yeah, KDM is uh, right. expensive. I wanted to pull a calendar. All right, so Monday we have Court of the Dead. This uh, pretty game. Oh yeah, I'm so excited for Court of the Dead. Uh, then Thanos Rising is the week after that. Oh my god, really? And then. That week we also start Are the PSI playing? shows. So that means we're seeing the movie before we play the game. Yes. Ooh. Oh, we're going to have to really check ourselves. No spoilers. Then we got to follow up with Vince, but we're supposed to do Zombie Tsunami. Tsunami, yeah. On the 9th. And then the week after that is we're doing... Deadpool versus the world. Deadpool versus the world. Oh, look at that. Green screen, Green screen cactus. cactus. Purple cactus. Purple cactus. Uh, so we actually just got this in the other day. Um, let's take a look at it. This is like Say Anything mixed with Cyanide and Happiness and Cards Against Humanity party game. Looks cool. Um, then the 23rd is... Uh, the Soto Beast. Uh, I don't know if you've seen some of our con coverage... But if you like what we do on the stream and does some killer interviews when we're at the cons. Everyone's going to hear my phone ring. So everyone just hold on one second. Joshua is uh, dealing with a personal call. But uh, if, you are go if you guys are not familiar, though, definitely check out some of our con coverage. Anne is a phenomenal interviewer, and she does some killer work. So definitely go check out some of the stuff that she's did. Uh, her Gen Con work was pretty stellar. There was a lot of stuff too, right? Yeah, we got we got a ton of comp. All right, so you really just blew that one off. I, I'm just <laughs> overwhelmed. <laughs> well, the phone is super clear on the stream. Thought my phone was going off, so my phone goes through Google. Yeah, and I have my email open on the stream computer, and it's taking the desktop audio. Oh, so <laughs> you just got straight desktop audio feed right through my computer to. Your house. That's funny. Um, so I went. I had to. Uh, so apparently, Josh is getting a personal call through another method here. So maybe go go take care of that, Josh. I'll be I'll be here. Don't worry about it. So I'm uh I'm right here. So honestly, the reason I followed you guys is because you seem super relatable. I follow the stream. If anyone's anything in chat, what did you guys think of Champions of Horror, the Greenberg game? Champions of Horror was a lot of fun, actually. Um, that was one of our favorite games that we did uh, on the stream, and that's one of the few ones that we had Aaron on the stream for, and Aaron really enjoyed it as well. Uh, but we really, we really liked that game, and it's it's a very fun co-op game. If you like co-op games, definitely check it out. Um. Yeah, he's talking really loud. <laughs> Thank you. Um, I'm trying to think of where I was. Champions of Heart was a lot of fun. It's been a while since we played it, but I, I'm a big fan of unique player abilities, and that game kind of ramps that up to 10 or 11, if you want. Uh, so I, I really enjoyed it. Uh, the Champions of Horror Kickstarter ended a while ago, so they're in the middle of fulfillment right now. It was an original... <sighs> Was that the game where they had a Kickstarter originally and then they retooled it? Josh, Champions of Horror. There was a Kickstarter for it a while ago, and then Greenbrier got the IP and then retooled it and then did a secondary Kickstarter for it. All right, so Champions of Horror was a Kickstarter like three, four years ago. Yeah. It's Walter's baby. Yeah. He ran that Kickstarter. Then they revamped it, put miniatures in the game, I believe. I don't. I believe the original game had like standees. Oh, really? And they put miniatures in the game, and then they told all the old backers when they kicked the first kick, they're going to get the upgraded advanced version, not pay any more. Like, oh, and they just did a secondary Kickstarter. And then the secondary the, Kickstarter to get more, more funding. funding for it. So That's really nice that they just contacted the original backers and said, hey, you got everything. Yeah, or like, we're running this. Like, you don't have to pledge for anything to get all the new stuff. That's or, really cool. Cool. Um, 
we talk about stuff or should I go back to the schedule? Uh, we were just we were riffing. Okay. So May 23rd, we're doing Marvel's Contest of Champions, Battle Realms. Now that is based off of the app. Yes. Okay. That's by Upper Deck. Yeah. Um, and then the 30th, we are doing uh, Remnants by Firestyle Games. Remnants is the post-apocalyptic wasteland in the game. Uh, real time. Game, where there's real time elements, but the yeah. whole game isn't real. So time. check out Gamma coverage if you want to like see what that is. Yeah. Um, that was Justin from Fireside showed that off. Yeah. And he's he's a blast. Uh, he showed off that, and he also showed off Grackles, which I believe we're doing as well, right? Yes. Which is, in a, uh, I want to say obscure, but that's not right. And what what's what's a game that, like, it's... Like Pyramid Arcade. What's the style of game that is? Oh, uh, you, there's a name. Uh, I'm, I'm I don't really drawing a blank right it. now. It's when a game is not, uh, I don't want to say it's not thematic, but when a game is abstract. Yeah, it's an abstract. Yeah. Abstract. Okay. It's an abstract game. That's yeah. uh, the, the theme is your crows on a, like a power line or something yeah. like that. Um, then June fourth, we have Greenbrier back, which with a uh, Barbarians uh, oh, Battlegrounds. Barbarian Battlegrounds. Oh, okay, that's it's gonna be such a punny hit stream. I'm already working on my my list of puns. Your beer for puns? That. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then we'll be looking at doing. Um, we have an event that should be happening. Um, In June. the sixth of June. With PhD, they have a speed gaming event. It's for retailers. Where is that at again? In Chicago. I've actually never been to Chicago. Neither have I. I've got family you know in who Chicago. Who lives there? Who? Julie. Does she really? Yeah. Oh. Her and Rob live there. My, uh, one of my uncles, it's like a great uncle or something, he lives in yeah. Chicago. Apparently, he makes pierogies once a week. So we could probably get fresh pierogies when we go up there. <laughs> Side note. So, more personal question. Do you guys think quality miniatures enhance the theme of the game, or do you think companies include them because consumers are more attracted to them? Uh, I think consumers are more attracted to them. Uh, there's a thing called overproducing your game, um, and consumers like it. Like, I know there's a very lo loud minority, but most consumers like it. Like, I'm going to say, look at um, Grim Forest. It's very overproduced for the game it is, but people love it. Yeah, it's still a good game. Like it's, nothing it's against because it. Because you got so yeah, there's there's multiple ways you could look at it. You could be looking at it like I've got a game with such fantastic uh, accoutrements that really bring it to a special level, whereas other people say uh, this game has more stuff than it should, and it's making the price more than it should be. Yeah, Grim Forest is overproduced, but it's all, yeah. I mean, no, no game technically needs minis, but people like them, and... I It, it depends on the kind of person you are. Like, um, mm. some people like minis just because they like to paint stuff. And some people like minis just because they like the 3D elements in games. They, yeah. they don't like to think about where stuff is. They like to see where stuff is. It helps them visualize. So, personally, I... I I don't think games need minis because it takes up more real estate. And then all of a sudden your game box gets bigger and it can cause problems. I love minis for the stream though. Like, for the stream, yeah, that's the, that's where I'm kind of like hesitant with this is cuz for the stream, minis add a lot. Um, Does it include true on future content? I didn't. I missed the second part of that. I missed it too. Uh, Love you guys, but bad influence on my bank account. <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, we're a bad influence on our own bank account as well. So you know, it's in my game sell because of minis. Yep. I um, honestly, I haven't. Have I played? I the only Simon game that I think I've played is the one that we did in Gamma. Uh, have you played? I'm pretty sure I played Zombie Side with you once. I did not play Zombie Side ever. Well, that's pretty. So we're talking about minis. We're talking about minis. We got uh, Quarter of the Dead here. These are actually pretty good for 3D prints. Yeah, these are nice. You can tell they're 3D printed, but they're nice 3D prints. Like, I, it's. 
you know why they painted them. D oh, did they? Yeah. Okay. I'm like, I'm, I'm not seeing much of a step on there. Yeah, they 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 painted them, but the the step is pretty minimal. They, m I doubt that they uh, vapor bathed them, vapor or whatever the hell. Yeah. But vapor treated. Uh, better storage solution in the box. Here is the center of KDM, but going home. Yeah, so Josh has two shelves right there. Not shelves, two shelving systems. What is your favorite board game of all time? Oh, Jesus, I can't answer uh, that. Game to death. Uh, it's the game we play the most. It's the, it's the game we truly enjoy. That's true. I actually had a conversation with Josh the other day um, about this, and I was saying because, like, I'm just starting to feel a little bit of Kingdom Death fatigue, but at the same time, we've been streaming it for roughly two days a week for four months, and then before that, we were f streaming it, and still are, once a week. Yeah. Um, several campaigns, several seasons, however you want to look at it, uh, but I still enjoy playing it. Yep. So it's definitely a big shout-out to that, just because I don't think I've played a game with nearly as much... Recurrence. Uh, the only thing we used to play like was uh, the Scent First Edition. Yeah. And I think that that gets slightly old after a while. I I got more bored with that than yeah. with that for sure. So, you know. Side question: If I came to a con and hung out with you guys. And get a beer with you. Would you look down upon me as a peasant? Not, Not at all. Not even a little bit. We actually. So when mm. we were at Gen Con last year, we uh, we met up with what, like four or five people from the stream, and we had a yeah, beer with them no. during one of the nights there. So mm. hang out no, with we, us. We like it. Honestly, we want to. I see think you guys. so. Dice Tower Con. We're gonna have our own room to stream from. Whoop, whoop. But it's gonna be like huge. Yeah. So we've been talking about like setting up just like a table to play games with people, like not on stream, just be like. Yeah. Um, in this room and play games with us. We just hide from everyone yeah, else. Yeah, don't be scared to say hi to us. If anything, like, I'm socially awkward. I am definitely awkward turtle. The and other thing is we have no idea who most of you guys are, like, in real life, and you guys know us, so, like... It's it's harder for us. We, we can't approach you because we don't know who you are. Yeah. That's not, like, a dig at you or anything. It's no, just it's that like we've had people come up and say hi before, and then I get in the back of my head, oh, my God, do I know this person? I don't know if I know this person. Should I know this person? And, like, I get super, like, hung up on it. Yeah. So um, if you do see us too, tell us your username. Yeah, tell us your new username because like, just look like, for people with no legs. <laughs> we're all purple. <laughs> yeah, uh, that's one. Yeah, thing. we stick out like a sore thumb. Who sticks out like a sore thumb? We all do. You stick out more. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I I go a little overboard with the purple. Um, but no, me. Um. We love meeting you guys, um, yep. and we love talking with you guys. And we've had like awesome stories of people like, "Oh, I'm this, and you've done this," and I'm like, "Oh, that's awesome." Um, Look for the Arby's bags. I'm not a fearful dude. I work in marketing. I work in DC, and I know booze, Allen Hamilton, Big Wig Center. But when I meet people in public from a stream, it's different to me a little bit. Yeah. If but there's like, alcohol involved, I'll be a happy camper. So come and yeah. have a beer with us, please. No, we, we've had drinks with like. We're pretty chilled back. Like the only like the only thing is, is like if we're in the middle of like doing work, we, we might be brief with you. Not yeah. not not, we, not we, to we'll be not rude. ignore you, but like we'll just be like, Hey, I would love to talk to you, but we're in the middle of recording or something like that. And are you guys going to Gen Con this year and working the oh where are you in the work where are you working the exhibitor hall ice chamber? Um and we will be at Gen Con. Yes. So we're just finalizing details of in what facet we will be in Gen Con. Yes. Um we might be at Orge a few some of us might be at Origins. I will not be at Origins. Um, Dice Tower Con for sure. I will be at Dice Tower Con. Um, oh, he's going to be an Envoy Herald. Awesome. Nice. You know what company you're working with yet? or Not sure what this. Uh, I've heard TP kicks everyone she meets in the shin, and that's why... They know all longer. That's actually accurate. Nicole does go around and kicks everyone in the shins. And she actually has like little knives in the tips of her shoes. So it really hurts. But she's also short. That's why it's always the shins. Yeah. Yeah. She's actually kicking at waist level for her. But yeah. it's in your shins. She just wants people at her level. Uh, but so Ice Chamber, that's really cool. Um, 
yeah, Vinny's we're, awesome. We're friends with Vinny and yeah. Abby, and... So I said this in chat the other I day, know. and no one believes me. In even in Twist Gaming, I actually have never met Avi. Yeah, you, I don't know how because you this? I, I, I know. I've <sighs> Ann and I are probably tied for the least amount of cons gone to between the two. No, Aaron's got the least. Amount. Aaron's got the least. But New Ageless, uh, we have not played New Ageless. Angelus. Angelus. I have not played it. We play what you guys see on stream pretty yeah, much. Yeah, if you like, guys have not seen it on stream, chances are we haven't played it. Because uh, Matt and I barely play anything off stream. Um, I played the Dragon Ball Z game. I hate you. We could play that now in chit chat. I, I've got such a Dragon Ball Z nerd boner. I know. You, you, it's like a 30-minute game. It's not that long. Yeah, Aaron has the least. I'm not sure if Anne has more or less time than me. I think she might have just a little less. Just when you add up Dice Tower Con and Pax U. Because I've gone to every con this past year. Or this past, like, six months. Do it. It's like Street Fighter. Uh, no, it's a dice rolling. It's the Dragon Ball Z Perfect Cell game by IDW that just came out recently. I had a lot of fun with their Legend of Korra game. You weren't an Avatar fan, though, right? I was not, and I did not get to play the game. Because it was a two-player game and you and Anne played. But I, w I was a really big Avatar fan. They're making a new one, aren't they? I hope not. Like show. Oh, the show's um, good. Um, it's gonna take place between oh, that's that and Korra. That's a bad idea. I think it's gonna feature one of the other characters, though. So, um, Sokka. I don't know. What is there? What's the? Is that the other character? Zuko. I don't know. Toph. I don't know. Uh, yeah, Legend of Korra was a lot of fun. Um, so we were doing top list, and that was on one of their games. Yeah, that was one of mine. Uh, anyone have pledged champions <laughs> of R? I see they're doing deliveries this month. Are they really doing deliveries this month? I, I don't know. So I think that's a mistake, though, with the the core, like the Avatar TV show, because I think that was a really interesting transition going from the original series, which was kind of like old world Asian martial artist type thing like old school kung fu more personal question favorite food favorite alcoholic drink i really don't drink but when i do it's normally rum and coke captain you, coke captain you drink, coke yeah, you like the spice I, 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 so i should clarify it's captain coke um the few times i do drink but it's very rare favorite food you're a steak man i am a steak but like steak and potatoes and cheese um, like I don't, I don't have a favorite food. food so groups? for me, favorite alcohol, I drink anything that is not tequila. I do not drink tequila. For a while, it was I didn't drink tequila and rum because I had a very bad experience with rum. But I got back into rum fairly recently. Try cracking um, root beer. I'm not a fan of root beer. Oh, Kraken's really good. So I made the I made Kraken pina coladas here a few times. Kraken sneaks up on you. It's it's strong, but um. I drink everything except for tequila. Yeah, Walter has... So let's just talk about Walter and Champions Heart. Walter has been super busy. Uh, we have, like, a group chat with him. <laughs> uh, Adi. That's my coworker, and they funny me because I don't drink coffee. So he's saying uh, I drink all the coffee at work. I... Uh, coffee, I... I drink coffee at work just because we have this really fancy espresso machine. So there's apparently this crack coffee at a place nearby, and it, they, it's... Oh, my God. You know what was the best coffee I ever had? What? When I was in L.A. visiting John, yeah, we had, I want to say it was Pete's... Co no, not Pete's. Phil's Coffee. You you watch the show um, Silicon Valley? Watched a couple episodes. They're constantly drinking Phil's Coffee in the show. Okay. But Phil's Coffee was amazing. Like, I'm not a huge coffee fan. I'm well, definitely more of a Was it fan. anything special in it, or was it just coffee? No, they had different, like... They had different styles of coffee, where it was different beans, where it was it was brewed phenomenally. And each one, they they have, like, eight different baristas that are there. And when I say baristas, it's not like Starbucks. I'm just pouring coffee and mixing milk into it. It's They're actually, like, doing the espresso with different pressures and temperatures and water quantities. And then, like, it's very interesting. Um, but... You could like request a specific barista if you want. Yeah. 
but they did a phenomenal job, and the coffee there was very good, and that's surprising because I'm more of a tea man. I'm yeah. definitely more of a tea so person. So the guys at work got this coffee, and it was, has, like, coconut oil in it with uh, cayenne pepper. Ooh. And some other stuff. So it's like this spicy. I so I hear that that's really like good. this new trendy thing in Hollywood that you drink your coffee with coconut oil and butter. So butter is from keto. That, that was something that started with keto. Yeah. Thing. Um, it's called a uh, bulletproof coffee. So yes, instead of using milk, yes. uh, you use butter since because milk got what lactose sugar. is the issue. Sugar. Yeah. Um, there's carbs in it. Um, Daphne, what's your favorite kind of tea? And someone was asking real quick what uh, we do for a living. We're both engineers, mechanical engineer, software engineer. I work for a consultant firm now. I work for a medical device company that yep. specializes in robotics. We do more project management at the moment, but... Yeah, I'm, I'm a paper pusher for sure. Yeah. But, you know, so we flip-flopped. You were more project management before. Yes, I was more project management before. And now I, I was more of the... Uh, Butter coffee. It's supposed to be really good, like... Like I'm not a coffee person. Like I would have tried it. Like, so Daphne, my favorite tea, and I, I'm gonna like I'm gonna recommend this for sure, is the passion tea from Tazo, and it's a passion fruit like orange peel, that's phenomenal. It's very very sharp, very sour, very so, strong. I love mint tea too. Mint tea is phenomenal. So my mom and I both like tea. I like I like black tea. Or Earl Grey. Earl Grey is fantastic. Like it's got a like, like uh, it's like, got a, like a like slightly gen- soapy aftertaste to it once in a while. I like uh, generic teas. Do you work on BIM projects? I'm drawing a blank right now. Bio something. Medical? Biomechanical. Biomedical. Am I, bi- that's I mean, I'm... most of the people in my job are biomedical engineers. Like ninety percent. Right, so those are the minis. I just wanted to open those up. Uh, try ice spearmint tea if you haven't. Super good. Um, so oh, building information modeling. No, no. Um, so you said oh, so. NZ Snake. I'm sorry to interrupt. They said they're an architect. So yeah. I'm I'm familiar with architecture. I actually studied architecture just a little bit in high school, and then I dated an architect for a long time. Um, yep. So I'm definitely familiar with the system. How it uh, works. so where was I? What was the point I was going for? I don't know. I wasn't listening. I lost it. It's okay. There's a lot of minis on the table right yeah. now. These are really big. This guy, they did a mini of Inside Show that looks absolutely phenomenal. Fantastic. So, um, oh, cool. I'm a model coordinator. Do you do any of the 3D re- uh, modeling, rendering? And if so, what software do you use? At, do you use NZ Snake? I learned on. Um, AutoCAD for 2D and uh, Revit for 3D for architecture. Revit was fun. I was dealing with one of the first iterations of it, um, but it's it's above my head now. I don't even use solid. Oh, Revit, nice. Yeah, I, I learned in I learned Revit from one of the first gens of it. It's it's really powerful stuff. It's really cool. Um. I don't know what I was thinking. Eh, I wasn't listening. It's fine. Something. I'll strike my. We're on tangents. We're on tangents. We're just going on tangents all day long. All night long. All cool. night. I don't want to say there's a lot of minis, but there's quite a few. Yeah, it's not an overwhelming amount. Uh, I know the greatest job of all I can have. Excuse me. Oh, bank manager. Do you actually do that? What? Jump into a pit of money. Um, I think so, there was like a show that like talked about the physics of that and how that would be like horrible. Oh yeah, you die. Well, Family Guy did a, a funny bit on that where like Peter went to yeah. dive into the pit of money, and just broke his neck. Uh, what prompted you guys to start Twist Gaming? So we prompt we were prompted to start Twist Gaming because we were Twitch game night, and when we went to go get partnered, Twitch was like, "We're not going to partner you guys with the name Twitch Game Night. You need to change your name." And so we said, okay. And then we came up with a name. We so spoke about, about what Twist stands for? The Worldwide International Source nope. for Tabletop. Nope. So nope, we got the eye wrong. The Worldwide Interactive Source 
for tabletop gaming. I don't know if it's Source. If it's streaming? No, it was supposed to be Source, I think. I don't know. Twist is actually an acronym. It's, it's, um, Exelon. Uh, You're very close. I think that's closer than that was. No, it's the Worldwide Interactive. I want to say it's Source for tabletop gaming. It's just Twist Gaming now. Yeah, it's just it, it, it's become Twist Gaming. It's just Twist Gaming. He said it's season one. Yeah, it's mostly accurate. Magical Magicness. Hello. That's a great name. Do you know Magic Mike? So, guys, we have a poll going on right now, and uh, it is we're going to be doing a giveaway at the end of tonight's stream, at least one. Can you hit the giveaway thing? I sure Just can. Put it back in chat for so like people that weren't here before. Guys, we are going to do at least one giveaway tonight, and it's going to be uh, Soto Beast was kind enough to tip to pull us into the next giveaway amount. We're currently about $84 away from the next giveaway, so if we get that worth of tips, bits, cheers, whatever the hell you want to call them, uh, within the next whatever until we're streaming like Don't 30 minutes to an hour uh, we will do another giveaway uh, and remember if you have Amazon Prime you've got Twitch Prime and you can buy $5 worth of bits for 99 cents so that makes it even you get easier. 500 bits for 99 cents yeah. technically whatever. normally costs more than that it's 85% off $5 to us it's $5 to us every bit you give us is a penny yeah um, and then everything else Twitch takes uh, but stuff uh, no, but we're going to be doing at least one giveaway tonight. So that's what that poll is. You guys can vote if you want the giveaway to be either Marvel Codenames, or Codenames Marvel, whatever you want to call it, uh, by CGE, or Orphans and Ash, and that's with the more fun expansion, uh, P-H-U-N, not F-U-N. Back to 50-50. Um, I'm surprised such a close vote. Will if, uh, Josh Gibbons the monkey? No, Josh. Yeah, Josh Gibbons. Um, did you play Orphans Nash when we were at PAX Unplugged? I don't think you guys played it. You guys kind of showed it yeah, off. Yeah, we just showed it off. We did just show it off. Uh, we have a copy on the shelf open. Are you guys video gamers or strictly tabletop gamers? What video games do you like? I haven't played video games in a long time. Yep. No, I'm, I'm pretty much solely but tabletop. I was definitely a much... M I was definitely more of a video gamer back in the day. Um, mm. For online, I would play Halo a lot. I'd play Madden a lot. I was big into online football. Um, yeah, I'm a I'm a big games. football fan. Yeah. So that that's where that came from. Um, big into that. I played a lot of Skyrim. Skyrim was a lot of fun. Uh, I like a lot of the retro games too. Yeah, like the. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Daphne. I I played a lot of Portal too. Uh, I played a lot of Portal. Portal. You know would be fun? The two of us playing Portal. That is true. It'd be very interesting. Halo, Madden, Skyrim. Did you get a no-scope? I was honestly not very good in Halo. I just enjoyed playing it because my roommates in college were very good at it. I never cared for first-person shooters on console after GoldenEye. Like, like when it went to the double... I was so bad at GoldenEye. When it went to the double joysticks, I stopped playing shooters. Uh, I used to request Madden... I would donate towards you guys playing a co-op game together. You know what game I actually used to play a lot? So not Madden. They used to have NCAA football. You know what game we haven't played in a while? What's that? Speedrunners. Oh, my God. Stop that. <laughs> um, can you make that a donation goal? We could. Uh, made, we could. We could. Um, um, Josh, can do Josh will too. set that up. I used to play a lot of NCAA football back when I was in college. Me and my roommate, who was actually on the University of Florida football team, uh, we would play NCAA football dynasty mode. So we would pick the worst school in the game, which I remember was the UL Lafayette Raging Cajuns. And we would make them like the greatest team in college football and play them through like 20 years. Uh, Aetherburn, um, I have played the co-op for Portal 2. So the only reason like I, don't, I wouldn't want to do it is I've, I'm assuming, Matt, you've played the co-op for. Yeah. So like it's all puzzle stuff. Yeah, it's puzzles. And like if you've done it before, like it, it, even though it's been like years probably since I played. Yeah. I feel like. It's not the same. Would you be Atlas or Peabody? <sighs> Atlas is the bit short battle, right? I don't have Madden 18. I haven't had Madden since 16 because I don't have time to play. We would sub on YouTube. I. <laughs> <sighs> <laughs> You're from Lafayette, Louisiana. That's hilarious. I'm sorry. <laughs> I the uh, So this was like NCAA football 10 probably. And I just remember the worst team in the game was the UL Lafayette Raging Cajuns. And we would take them, we'd make them to NCAA champions. Um, I do love football, though. 
I'm I'm a big football fan. I have season tickets to the Dolphins. Or to UL for two years. Oh, look at that. Raging Cajun. I went to UF for a semester. I went to UCF for a year. I was in UF for a year. I only went for a semester. I went for a semester and a half. Uh, you win. Yep. Josh and I both actually had very similar paths in college where we went to college and then we stopped going to college while we were still in college. Yep. And then we went to a local college instead. I went to work and then I went to a local college. Soto and Beast, how do you feel about Kirk Cousins? Did you think that he was the answer or are you happy that the team moved on? I'm very curious because personally, I think that he was overhyped and just got really lucky the last year. Sorry, we're going into football talk. Yeah, this is tangents. You're just losing me now. This is tangents. Listen, I'm a Dolphins fan. I've been used to the disappointment. I go to the games to drink and cook, and I cook good food. You do. Have you been? You've been tailgating with me. Yeah, I have. <laughs> It's a fun now, oh God. So I remember one time. I I w- say when we, no, it was I a preseason game with you, me, and Kenny. It was like two years ago. Kenny was awkward as hell, but yeah. Yeah, Kenny was. Oh, yeah, I'm not <laughs> yeah. going to get into that. <laughs> no, no, we're not going to get to that on stream. Um, but I remember it was really funny. We were cooking. We made really good food. We made steak. Uh, I think if you paid him fairly. Can you tell get pierogies? Alex Smith replaced that. That what he did there. <sighs> Alex Smith, I feel, is more of a game manager, though. I feel like Andy Reid just coaxed as much out of him as possible. Now, next time we go to game, can we do, like, when's the, next, when's the season start again? Uh, it's going to start in late August, early September. I believe it's actually the weekend after Labor Day is when the season starts. So like four weeks before that is when the preseason starts. A cooler starts. day? I would go with you. There's yeah. no such thing in Florida. Like, during winter, a little bit. There's, like, two winter games, maybe. Yeah. By the way, Matt, you don't sound drunk anymore. You were slurring some words pre-stream. I am honestly maybe drunker now than I was then. Um, I think part of the thing is that uh, the longer I go on, the the more I enunciate my words until I like I'm really drunk. Like and the, then he doesn't uh, talk anymore. No, yeah. Well, he does talk, but he can't. It's not English. It's English. It's not nonsense. Words. Yeah. Um. Go for one more beer. Um, I think you have two more left. I or, or is one more left. There was one before the stream, I think. Okay. I got a six pack. You've yeah, never had a six pack. Huh? You've never had a six pack. What do you mean? Never had oh, a. Oh, fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, it was really funny. So at that football game we were at, we cooked really good food, but then it started uh, downpouring for a second. So there was this nice guy across the way. And he's like, come into my tent. And so he ran across the way into his tent and chilled out. And he gave us all shots of whiskey. Yep. Very, very nice. And then he offered us some illegal substances. And we're just like, we're going to have to pass on that. So I forgot we, about that. Yeah. So we, we went back to our car afterwards. I'm a gruff stuff of Nightmare Backers. I think gruff is super underrated as far as card games go. What do you guys think when you play it? I think gruff is super underrated as well. Yeah. Oh, it's a super fun game. It's, it's really solid. Yeah. And it's got the fact that it's got so much that can be. It's got so many variations of the cards that it allows you to build a very personalized custom deck. Um,. That and Brent's awesome. But no, in, in yeah. all seriousness, though, I think that the game plays very well. It plays very tight, and uh, it's easy to pick up, easy to play. It's fun to play. So just a little side note here. So Josh and I have said before, we don't really play a ton of games off stream. But when we do play games off stream, a handful of times that we have, it's been gruff. Yeah. Like, that's definitely, of the games we've showed off on stream the one we played most off stream. Yep. Um, Daphne asked pie or cake. If you had to pick one for the rest of your life. Pie. Hundred percent pie. I like I like fruit in my dessert. Yep. It's harder to do that with cake than with pie. Apple pie? My raspberry pie? But what if you could have cobbler still? I think cobbler goes in the same thing as pie. But but you couldn't have, would you say, okay, if you could have cake and cobbler? 
if cobbler did not count and and you cannot have so I don't really make cobbler ever, but if I wasn't allowed to have pie and cobbler was a substitute and I could still have cake with it, then I think that that's crude. And, and Easy Killin's got one of the points that I was going to make where you have savory pies, too. You don't really have savory cakes. Mm. That's Well, that's not true. I, growing up in like a Polish-Russian household, there's, we used to make meat cakes. It's really just a hamburger, but it was meat cakes. So there's that. Um so many different pies, pizza pies. So, yeah, we did pie day two years ago. We did pizza pies, macaroni and cheese pies, shepherd's pies, sweet pies. There's I feel like there's another pie. savory pie. Chicken pot pie? Kenny Maybe. brought that spaghetti pie. I knew I liked Matt. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, cake's the wrong answer. I'm sorry. And you know why? Because of the cake pie. I made you a cake pie. I don't think I can make a pie cake. I mean... I don't think I can make a pie cake. I think you could if you really tried. I don't know how I would. Make a pie and then you like... Cover it in cake batter. That's it. But that's a pie then. Then it's a pie in a cake. Yeah. If you're eliminating pies from the available things... (laughs) You guys buy a cigar, let us buy it. Do it. I mean... (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> <laughs> I mean, possibly. This is like Seinfeld to the extreme right now. It's just a show about nothing. It's always a show about nothing. Okay, I'm going to go get a refill. You talk about cake and pie for a second there. Um, Ooh, cakes and pies, cakes and pies. Josh, but what like, pie I, has the most sugar? Most sugar? Yeah. Sugar? <laughs> I can't even talk. Uh, sugar pie. I was going to say something completely different and inappropriate for stream. No, no. Hi, oh, Narflek. See, this is why it's a great combo. I literally pay to hang out with you guys for an hour. I mean, just meet us up at a con. You don't have to pay anything. I mean, if you want to buy us a drink or something, that's cool. But we're cool. Plus, we can go adult theme pies, too. Definitely can't. Give that up. Yeah, that was the joke I was trying to make, Ice Chamber. I'm going to stay out of that. So Matt's off getting more drinks. I need to ask chat. I'm not a huge pie person, but, like, yeah, I'll probably pick cakes. Um, Chat, who in chat has gone and watched Michael Bolton's Valentine's Day special? Because I've told chat to watch this. I want to see who has listened. I just think that there's more opportunities for pie than cakes. Just saying. I don't know why pie and cake debate always comes up on stream. Because there's a stark difference. And we have very differing viewpoints on it. I'm sorry, I wasn't listening. Can you repeat the question? Have you gone and watched the Michael Bolton Valentine's Day special yet? This is the tale of Captain, Captain Jack, Jack Sparrow. Sparrow. Like, it's on Netflix. Just go watch it. Yeah, I, I agree with you, Soto Beast. It's it's pie all day, every day. It's pie. Pie's the winner. What's your favorite kind of pie, though? Can you introduce a pie cake? It's a pie cake and the thing. I've heard the song. Um, Josh. Yes. What's your favorite kind of pie? <sighs> I love the Jack Sparrow song. It, it's it, it's in the special, so you go watch See, it. Gibram agrees too. Pie's margin of victory over cake is immeasurably large. Yeah, it's I agree. I'm I'm not a fan of fruit pies because you don't eat fruit. Yeah, because I don't eat fruit. Pie's so grand. You need to go watch a special now. Cheesecake is a pie. Yes, cheesecake is a pie. Cheesecake is good. Um, what's your favorite kind of pie? I was such a big fan of coconut cream pie growing up. Probably coconut custard soak. pie, actually. But or peanut um, butter. We, we talk, peanut butter pie. Peanut butter pie is good. Chocolate peanut butter. Anything chocolate peanut butter you I have. I have not made a banana cream pie in a while. You got me one to make a banana cream pie there, Soto Beast. Oh, lemon cake. 
My dad makes a killer lemon cake with lemon curd and then fresh whipped cream. So it's just simple but fantastic. Very refreshing. Um, so my dessert of choice is chocolate. I really don't care for anything else. So I think chocolate does a better forming cake than in pies. <sighs> I guess. Um, peanut butter pie is really good, yeah. So my go-to when I do peanut butter pie is I do, like, whipped cream, softened cream cheese, sugar, and peanut butter. That's and then I just kind of, like, fold them together. And uh, typically what I'll do is, like, I'll melt the cream cheese and peanut butter and sugar together, let it cool, then I'll fold that into the whipped cream. Make a banana cream pie with this money, Kriegis. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, uh, next stream. I'm going to make a banana cream pie. Um, and then for you, I think I put a chocolate ganache on top. Yes, you did. Yeah. I'm more of a fan of fruit pie. Key lime pie is a great pie. And by the way, key lime pie is just stupid easy to make. It's really stupid easy to make. Uh, Sure, but it clearly is the same as other pie with the... Marquee ingredient changed. Um, so Matt made the peanut butter chocolate pie or cake for me, and uh, wh like what happened with the cake? It fell apart, right? <sighs> okay, so for Josh's birthday, Josh always requests me to make a chocolate peanut butter pie for him. Cake, uh, cake, yeah, yeah, chocolate peanut butter cake for him, and I did. I was going to. The issue though is that when I went to take the cake out of the cake tins, they fell apart. They cracked in half, both yeah. of them. So I had no layers that I could work with. So my secondary choice was I'm going to make cake pops. So cake pops is you take the frosting that you're going to make. In this case, I made a uh, peanut butter what, whipped what cream frosting. What did you said earlier before? I didn't do the cream cheese. Okay, no cream yeah. cheese. Yeah. So I I uh, I did a peanut butter like whipped cream, and I mushed that in with the cake crumbs. It's supposed to be how cake pop is made. I put too much of the frosting in. They weren't holding their shape. They were just like. They wouldn't hold on to the stick. Yeah, that's what it was. So I got very upset, and I'm ordinarily a decent baker. I think Josh can vouch for me. Mm -hmm. My father is a baker. My grandfather is a baker. Yep. Comes from a line of bakers. And it's very upsetting for me when something doesn't work out. So I I let it sit overnight, and I was just very upset stewing. Then the morning I did have a bowl of cake mush, though, which is delicious. Yeah. So in the... Um, in the morning, when I woke up, on the day of your birthday, yeah. I'm like, I, I had an epiphany. So I went and I, I got the Oreo cookie crumb cake tins from Publix yep. and then filled the interior of it with the cake mush, piped some of the peanut butter whipped cream on top, did a chocolate ganache on top of that too. <laughs> Thank you, Giver. <laughs> uh, did a peanut butter ganache on top too, and it was a surprising hit. <laughs> uh, so uh, Soda Beast was asking how we met so uh, Nicole Panda and went to elementary school with a crazy ex-girlfriend of mine yes and we hung so out so while I was still going out with her we all hung out together and one of my first experiences with Josh was just us sitting there in the same room as each other, not saying anything. We were like both a beer awkward or something, awkwardly. Yeah, cause you, and you don't drink. And I don't I, drink. And back when I was in the early stages of my drinking. so. Um, and then somehow I invited you over to play Descent. Yep. And yep. I played it, and I had only experience with like Monopoly and Scrabble at that point. Yep. And, and I played it, I'm like, oh, wow, this is cool. And, uh, you know, just blossom from there. That's just what happened from there. Um. Yeah, the, I, I think it's funny that I brought you in with the... That's actually... It's not my intro game yeah. in the board games. So my intro game was Catan. Subtle as Catan. I actually, I had played Catan before I met you. Um, I played that with uh, Jeffy and Chris, who has been on stream once or twice before. Yep. Uh, so this is... Yeah. Um, so me and my friend, that I'm not really friends with anymore, uh, went to our local game store. Yeah. And we're looking around, and... We see this giant box on the shelf, and it's Descent First Edition. Yeah. And we're like, oh, let's go Happies. Um, and we bought this game, and we just <laughs> played it nonstop afterwards, and <laughs> it became my favorite game till KDM came out. 
So uh, the funny thing is, I remember I was friends with Josh right when he ordered KDM, and I remember him getting it and him being so excited to play it. You know when I got KDM? No. On my birthday. Yes, it was your birthday. That's right. It came in on my birthday. And he's like, we have to play. So we played, and I'm just like, oh my goodness, this is a lot of fun. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know what else happened on that birthday? No. That's when Zach Clark got his job with King- Kingdom Death. Was it really? Yep. That's hilarious. And it's funny, because it's my birthday, and I started sharing a post of, like, I started this. That's hilarious. But, um... But yeah, so one of your favorite birthday desserts was a, a cake. Yep. Uh, it was a pie cake. Pie cake. Pie cake. Which was actually a cake pie. I think the second word is what it actually is. I don't know. I'd pay money to see you guys and a couple of the other Twist Game people play a game of Twilight Imperium 4. Uh, we would need a copy of it. I don't, don't have, have a copy. It. Yeah. Um, and you know what? That, that company, that's part of is it Fantasy Flight? I have no I, idea. I think it's part of the Asthma Day branch somewhere. Um, it's one of the harder companies to work with for finding the contact thing there. Like yeah, I said, the, I would the, pay the money. The bigger companies, the bigger companies are harder to uh, find their media contact. It is, it is fancy. fancy yeah, that's what I thought. I play, we played Mysterium on stream. It's on YouTube. Yeah, we did. We played it for Halloween. We all dressed up. Oh, yeah. We went to Goodwill. Yeah, we did. Yeah. Aaron Bingo arrived. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, guys, you got to vote in this poll because it's tied. What about Taramiska? So, I real talk, if I sent you guys a copy of it, would you play it? Um, Possibly. I mean, possibly. Um, it depends on how many, like, I, I'm not familiar with the game. Is TI four as bad as TI three and time wise? That's that's the biggest issue with. I know TI. It, it, it can't be a long game. How long? Like, full day Monopoly game kind of thing. Oh really? Yeah. Oh, I, like like it's. How many players? Um. Played seasons. We have not. I've not played seasons. Um. About an hour less than the time of TI3. 8675309. Keep the poll at 5050 yeah. and make this. It's about an hour or less of time of Twilight Imperium broke. 3. Yeah, that did break. I don't know who broke it. Uh, but if you guys committed to playing, I'd send you a copy. Is it like a campaign? No, it's a 4X space game. Like a really in depth 4X space game. I'd be interested to see if Anne would be interested to play. Yeah. I guess she's still the group. in the chat. Uh, I don't think so. Probably not. Wake up, Anne. Yeah. No, reach out. Uh, you can reach out in Discord. I don't. I, don't, I think you're in. I'm not sure if you're in Discord, but yeah. No. Well, ask us. We'll see. Uh, but it's so much more fun than Full Day Monopoly. Have you done any legacy games? Uh, so we had a we we've had some discussions on that, and one of the issues was we didn't want to do a legacy game because we didn't want to spoil legacy games. However, now that Pandemic is into Season 2, uh, we have been contemplating doing a Pandemic Legacy OG uh, stream at some point in time. We're not sure how we would fit it in, though. Yeah. Um, our schedule's starting to get... On. Um, yeah, our, our schedule's just getting that. So we have... We have our Kingdom Death stream, which isn't going to go anywhere. Yeah, that that's, that's going to be if if it's yeah. the only place it's going to go is maybe a different day in the week, and, and probably not. Probably not. Uh, we have our spotlight streams, which we do either normally on a Monday or Wednesday. Yep, that's going to probably stick where it is. Yeah, it's probably going to be the either one of those. Wednesday's uh, probably going to be the preferred day, but Monday's um, going to be there too. It depends how many players the game is. Yeah. So if it's a two player game, it's probably going to be Matt and Matt, Matt and I on Monday. Yep. It's a three-player game. It'll be on Wednesday because that's when Anne is free at the mm-hmm. moment. Um, and that works with Kickstarters because typically we do the Monday and then they launch on Tuesday. Is, yeah, a lot of Kickstarters launch on Tuesdays. It's a good day. We already killed half of the KDM stream. So the actual the, the second half of the KDM stream wasn't always there. It was yeah. just a, a filler we put in temporarily. Yeah. So we used to do a different show. We used to do a different campaign game on Thursdays. Uh, and then we got just got to a spot where we didn't have a game we wanted to really play. Well, the, the campaign ended. 
But like, like we, we we ended the campaign, but like we didn't have another game that we wanted to play. Right, and so we were um, fishing for some ideas. So so KDM was easy. Uh, so it's good to hear, Soto. The, Definitely, yeah. um, Josh will probably be into contact with you. Yeah. Josh is our main point of contact when it ter- comes to scheduling stuff for the yeah. stream. Uh, so I have a game coming in this summer. Summer. Um, Mirda, I think the name of it is. It looks really fun. It's a campaign game. Kind of reminds me a little bit of Kingdom Death, a little bit not as dark as Kingdom Death, but still a little, it, it's, it's a light dark fantasy. Okay. Uh, which might be really cool on stream. I don't... I, we're going to have to see when that comes out. Uh, that looks really good. Um, so we have that. Um, so we have what? Uh, Thanks, everyone. We really appreciate it. Thank you, Matt. You're welcome. Can someone take care of that? I don't want to turn the computer back on. So do you just have a wall of boxes from all the spotlight copies you have? Yeah. Pretty much. Yeah, if one of you guys is a mod, you can do that. Oh, or I'll turn the computer back on. Uh, oh, wait. Can you do it? I think so. I hit blocked. I don't think that. No, I can't. I can't. I don't have a mod hammer. You didn't give me a ban hammer, Josh. Oh, no. You did give me a ban hammer. Okay, I did it. Yay. There we go. Get wrecked, Toby. I'm not a mod, so I blame Josh. Thanks. I'm actually a mod. That's kind of cool. I have power. Damn it. I need to make a couple more mods in channel just because we have some, but like they're not quite as constant as they used to be. I feel like we have at least one mod that I know that we can make. Yeah, no, I, I, I know people I can mod. Well, I know people we can mod. Mod you, Matt? I don't think it makes sense. Mod Pizza. Have you guys played Rum and Bones? Second time. That sounds nope. familiar. That's. I don't we haven't played, but it sounds familiar. Simon game. Is that the Simon game? It is the Simon game. Uh, I don't have that. Um, I haven't played much for Simon besides like Zombie Side. I've only played the. Oh man, Dragon Castle. Is that the name of it? You sh- you demo Dragon Castle. You yeah, didn't even play I didn't it. even play it. I just I demoed it. I have not played a lot of Simon games. We are busy bees here at Twist Gaming. It's very hard for us to play stuff that we have not showed off on stream. Yeah. Um, a link to my board game collection in the description of the channel. Is that like accurate? Just because of how much it's, stuff you've It's got not there? up to date with all the new stuff. But. Uh, So it probably doesn't have, like, the last, like, 50 games we have gotten recently. But, like, it has, like, older stuff. Stuff I would have played off stream. Oh. Is okay. in that list. Yeah, BGG collection. It should be down there. It's my personal BGG account. Hmm. Um. Gabriel, you voted already. When is the most anticipated of 2018 coming out from you guys? Um, so we, I don't think we're going to announce a most anticipated list. I think what we're going to do is just a retrospective best game list. Like the, the most anticipated game so far that we've like have up for our spotlight is probably our game on Monday, which is Court of the Dead. Yeah, that, that's probably like right now. Yeah. Um, of games we've played this year, what would be your f- your most anticipated so far? Uh, games we played this year? That's a tough one. That's a really tough one. I can't even one. remember what games we've played this year. Court of the Dead looks nuts. Court of the Dead looks yeah. like we've got some parts in front of us. And it's it's very cool but just because I've... I order a lot of stuff from sh- Sideshow. Excuse me. I order a lot of stuff from Sideshow. And... Uh, I've seen the Court of the Dead stuff around. Uh, any perspective at all on the God's Fear? God Fear? I have no idea what that is. Not familiar at all. Let's 
So this is out of date a bit, probably. You're out of date. But yeah, that's more of what the collection is. You're out of date. Um, we got a little gift back from IDW of some cool games. Oh yeah, we did get. But yeah, um, no, we uh, so. this case are probably worth checking out somewhere. Um, what's it? Uh, what's it about? So I think Exxon was asking if we get to play games off stream at all. We we very rarely play. Not because we don't like to. Not because we because don't. Because like we to. don't have time, time to. to. Typically, um, play games. Uh, is God Tier the one, the one player game? That's out on. That's like killing it. I think that's. I think that's it. I don't get to keep up with all the uh, releases. All the Kickstarter releases. I like. I try to. You do. You do keep eyes on them. Much better than the rest of us do here. Um, I also get like I have. I'm still someone that uses an RSS feed, even though Gil Google tried to kill it. But I'm still one of those. Old and strong. Old and strong, and uh, I have an RSS feed for all the tabletop games that come out to Kickstarter. So I. Yeah. I, I glimpse almost every game. God I might not look at every project, but... God Fear is a semi-skirmish game, but it's almost like CTF. Kind of hard to explain. Uh, on Broken Society. There we go. Ah. So, Kickstarter. I mean, you could follow Twist Gaming on Kickstarter and see what we back. It's normally what we spotlight. You could also follow us on Facebook, Twitch, Twitter, YouTube, Instagram, and come chat with us on the Discord channel where... Um, I'm hungry. <laughs> Uh, but I've got a broken bank account. It happens. It happens. Especially Kickstarter. Kickstarter will do that to you. Yep. So let's look. So, so what, what was it? The what game? was the last thing you backed on Kickstarter, Josh? Um, actually backed or just backed because... What was the last thing you actually backed on Kickstarter? Like product, not dollar. I think it was KDM. Really? Yeah. No, you know, I backed for a cl the the tie clips, the sword tie clips. Oh, you got those? Yeah, I got the uh, I got the legend of the I got the master sword because I'm a Zelda nerd. I was never into Zelda. Yeah, I know. Um, let me see what the last thing I backed was. Most of the most of the projects are a dollar. For like people that we spotlight and stuff. Um, where would that be at? My stuff, I guess. I stopped back in board games for the most part because oh, of back the stream. Yeah, so and like it's, it, it's not that like I don't want to play these games. It's I don't have time to play any more oh. games than what I have. The last thing that I backed is a uh, sp the spherical chessboard that was on. Kickstarter. It's like a globe. It's pretty cool. Um, yeah, Sword Clip was the last thing I backed. My last thing that was not a board game that I backed was the Ixion Minimalist Fountain Pen. And then before that, the uh, Single Edge Razor. Before that was the Dash 5.0 wallet, which I don't care for. Mm. I like my... I think I, I still use the 3. Just a better wallet. I backed every one they have, and I just don't care. Oh, Unicorn Coat. That was a backing. I can't believe you bought that damn thing. I, I got a Unicorn Coat. Screw you. Oh, that Kingdom Death Monster total. <laughs> yep. Yep, that was a lot of money. Bears vs. Baby was the last board game I backed. Like, actually backed. Yeah. Polygons, which still hasn't delivered yet. The Refugi. The Refuge. Yeah, uh, that was Floyd's game. Yeah, it's Floyd's game. It was one of our first spotlights. I think it was our f one of our first. It wasn't our first, but it was I don't one think of it was our one of our first. But Satan's play. Uh, KDM was the Black Friday Gambler's Lantern. Man, the uh, that that razor that I backed is actually really good. I forget the name of it. Definitely want to shout out that razor. That was good. Um, the Single Edge Razor 2.0, a really creative name, but uh, one of the best razors that I've owned. I'm a I'm a big razor snob. Oh, you backed uh, Lucky Duck Games. 
Soto, Soto uh, Beast. I don't know if you saw. We've got the Grimslinger giveaways going on right now. So the first thing that pops into my head for Norway is the Maelstrom ride from Epcot, which I'm very upset that they turned into uh, the... Uh, Frozen. Uh, Frozen, yeah, thank you. The Frozen ride. I'm very upset about that. Uh, Maelstrom was one of my favorite rides in all of Disney. And uh, the fact that they turned it into... Uh, the fact that they closed it in general upset me. So... Also, the Norway area in Epcot is very nice. They've got one of the best snacks in Disney as well. Very underrated. What snack is that? The school bread. It's like a sweetened bread that they inject with a custard filling. That actually sounds really good. Dip the top of it in icing and then cover it with shredded coconut. I know that's where I lose you. You're you lose not me a on the coconut. coconut. Um, but it's the school bread is fantastic there and it's it's one of those things where you constantly see it on the things you should try in disney yep. it's like you know chronicles of crime by Le that looked like an awesome game i like oh so my goodness yeah. vince loves us and we would have done a spotlight of that if it it's we really actually we, we reached out to him about it and he said i would love to have done a spotlight with you guys but it would have spoiled some of the game and i don't want to ruin the experience and like i completely understand yeah. that but showing it off at gamma that game is so cool. Skull bread. Yeah, the, the school bread's really good. Mansions uh, of Madness. Yes, we played second edition. We had Middle Guy. And Joel. Oh, that's when I won it the first time, right? Yeah, like, stupidly. Yeah. So... Josh, no. Matt, did I miss the collaboration with no, you? Yeah, no, not, not yet. Um, I need to reach out. It's uh, it's going to be a while. It, it might be a while. Um, yeah, I need to reach out. I haven't heard from him. So we have to talk legal stuff. Once I have legal stuff cleared and things. Jumping back. I'm sorry. I'm having some like ADD moment here. You're so fine. jumping back into the Norway thing. One of the other things that Norway reminds me of that comes into it is, is again, this is for uh, when I'm in Epcot. They, I do drinking around the world when I'm in Epcot just because I like my booze. And um, in Norway, it seems I always get Aquavit, which is like a rye liqueur. I don't know if it's liqueur. It's more of a liquor. But uh, it's a rye liquor. You know, I'm sure you've had rye bread where you get like yeah. the seeded rye. You get the rye, like the, the seeds in it. It tastes like if you made a booze out of that, it's just really odd, but it's good. Um, so, are you guys into card games? Any thoughts on card games? Matt and I play Magic casually. Yeah, we do. Um, that's one of the few games we do play. Emphasis on casually. Yes, we don't. We're not competitive. Not at all. We just make fun stuff when we play each other. We normally buy starter decks, and then we might, might modify them a little bit. Yeah. Uh, Rael, right now. Yeah, it's one of the things that we do. Is uh, so, Josh. What's your go-to casual Magic deck? I like black white, like stupid stuff. Just I'm a jerk. I'm an annoying jerk. I play Gruff is greater than Magic. Change my mind. I'm not trying. To, like I, not gonna, I enjoy Gruff too. Like yeah. it's just we play super casual um, and play Gruff not on too. It's just there's a little more customization to be had with Magic, but at the same time, it's a harder entry point. So it's a trade off. So I Josh play, play Yu-Gi-Oh. I have not played Yu-Gi-Oh since like Yu-Gi-Oh came out. Yeah, me too. Um, Black Blue Mill. That's for that's for my Magic deck. You do, uh, I I started that deck. I I know you did, but I, I started it. I and made it much more taken annoying. It. Um, <laughs> I made it much more annoying. So Yu-Gi-Oh, I never got into. I had a friend who liked Yu-Gi-Oh and he had cards and he built himself a deck. I was more of a Pokemon. And um, he gave me all the cards he didn't want. And then I made a deck out of those, and, and then I kicked his ass. Yeah. Like, repeatedly kicked his ass. Blue Eyes White Dragon. Um, I thought Josh played Pokemon. I don't know if I ever... There's a Dragon Ball Z, Dragon Ball Z collectible card game. Mm. I'm going to be honest, Grove is probably the best game no one's played. I've made for another Sonic Adventure game, and they haven't seen it. I'm, I'm not going to argue with that. Yeah, so. I, no, I enjoy Grove. Um, we do card... It's, it's just really... Gruff is, it it means a lot 
when we say that that's one of the few games that we play off stream. Yeah. Because we've got a ridiculous variety of games to play. And one of the things with Gruff, it's not a thing against it. So, like, for Magic, we have, like, a couple decks on the side. My Gruff boxes, I don't have, like, a deck to the side, really. It's like, oh, we have to go take it out. It would just take us longer to say, oh, we're going to play, like, a 10-minute Magic game. Yeah. And just play. Um, I was much more of a Pokemon player than a Yu-Gi-Oh player. I was uh, in a Pokemon league. I did more card collecting than actual playing. Me too. I was a. I still have all my cards. I think I have my cards somewhere. Are they worth anything now? Probably not. Uh, unless like they're mint condition. I. They are. I have them all in sleeves. Uh, I made a super ultimate annoyance deck, black, blue, and magic. All flyers and nope cards. Super regretted it when I was used. I really hated myself. <laughs> Mine's fairly similar. It's not as many. Nope, and more. Just discard that. Nope. Can discard we agree? That. Pokemon was sh- shit. Uh, you didn't miss. You didn't miss much. I mean, we've just been on tangents. Uh, Matt, what was your main character for Pokemon trading card game? I was really young. Okay, yeah. I was really young. I think uh, I want to say my main deck was a normal deck, just a white deck. Because it had a lot of nope in it that I played it with. I don't remember. It was mostly nope I don't nope recall ever playing Pokemon card games. Just, I, just I wasn't good. Cards. I was not good. I played the Game Boy game all day long. Oh, Game Boy game. Oh, yeah. Do you have red or blue? I have blue. I have blue, too. Blue I went down day. to Miami for a Pokemon tournament and got my ass kicked. Oh, yeah. Because everyone did the fucking... <laughs> The rare candy cheat? Yeah, rare candy cheat. I mean, I did that, too. But, but like... Oh, yeah. It's only the, the, we only care about the original So, right before one. stream... We were doing Pokemon quizzes. We do, yeah, we were. Matt we found were. a Pokemon quiz. It's like Gen One Pokemon quiz, and like it was the easiest thing ever. It was the thirty-five easiest. questions. We got all thirty-five right. Yeah, we got all thirty-five right. And Matt was giving me the questions, and it was a multiple choice, and I was yeah. answering them without seeing the answers. There was maybe two, and it's only because you needed to hear what the choices were. Yeah, it was like it was two because you need. Yeah, you. It was like which one of these is a fire type Pokemon? I was like, okay, what are the choices? Um, it's like the original 12 and oh god, Smash Brothers. The OG Smash Brothers, Captain Falcon. I only played Captain Falcon. Kirby. All day Kirby. Kirby was good. Kirby has like awesome recovery. I uh you know, his recovery is fantastic, but I was a big fan of Captain Falcon just cuz of the hard hitting. My friend Mike was really good with Donkey Kong. Really good I, with I Donkey suck Kong. at the game, but yeah. I could do the first 151. <laughs> Not like rapid fire in order, but I could get like I don't ninety five percent of them if off the top of my head. A uh, hundred, I get I get most of them. There's a handful of them like I'm like I forgot that's a Pokemon. I still remember the Pokerap. That's funny. What was your, what was your starting Pokemon? Uh, Bulbasaur, because I was a noob. I was a I was a Squirtle guy. I remember him. I don't. I don't remember him, but I remember. You play him. Dragon Dice? Uh, I have not. No. So I am much younger than you, I think, Ice Chamber. So that's a baby. Yeah. Okay, that aged me. Uh, first gen's one fifty. Yeah, first gen. I, 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 I'm, I'm good with the first gen Pokemon. Pokemon Snap, Matt. Oh my god, that was such. A I good actually game. have a copy of that. I know. I, uh, it's so good. Pokemon Snap is so good. The original Pokemon Stadium was really good too. The squad. I was definitely Captain Falcon man. Yeah. I was decent. I mean, I'm not like tournament level, but I was like a decent casual player. And, uh, I was very casual. I'm I'm not the best at fighting games. You know, what, you know, what fighting game I was good at Soul Calibur. Oh, I love Soul Calibur. It's been a long time since I played that it. That was like one of the few fighting games that I was actually decent at. Fighting uh, you know what game I miss and like I want to get the new version but I can't bring myself to spend the money? What? Is um Dynasty Warrior. I know you have the Legend of Zelda Dynasty Warrior. Yeah. I feel like that was a disappointment though. No, it's good. It was it good? It's really good. Mm-hmm. I like Dynasty Warrior. Like I don't think anyone mained Mario. That's impressive. Who did I mean in Soul Calibur? Oh, Soul Calibur, I was... Dynasty Warriors was really good. I want to get one of the newer ones, but I have time. Um, 
I remember Lube. Oh my god, yeah. What? what oh, so Caliber Callum so was one of my mains. I think Zevtis was the one that I used all the time. Does that ring a bell? Oh, who I always killed it with. Um, I had fun with Talum. I had fun with. Uh, Need more characters. Give me more characters. Cervantes was really good. I remember that from like Soul Calibur two. I don't. I played Tekken for a little bit too. Tekken two, Tekken tag. Who was the guy with the bow staff? I don't remember. I played Zevtes a lot though. X E V T E S. Oh, Valdo. I think oh. Valdo might be who I was thinking of. I'm sorry. Siegfried Keelik. was good. Kill. I fucking destroyed people. Kill. Kill had stupid range. Look up. I think it w I want to say it was Zeftis, but I think that's wrong. Now that I'm I'm thinking of it, I think Valdo was my main. Valdo was the guy that was all weird. He had he was like the gimp, right? He's the like this dude. He was the gimp with the claws. Yeah, I think that's who I mained. I'm pretty sure that's who I mained. But yeah, no, What's that freaking staff I destroy people with. Because like, I would be like halfway across the map and be like, yeah, you get range, yeah, just freaking range it, yeah, kill the. <laughs> Uh, yeah. Uh, he had a really good. Um, did you guys hear anything about my Mystia? I am not familiar. Mystia. I have not. That, that staff, staff is, is broken. So good. Oh. I didn't oh, like. The only time I switched him was when I, I like someone was like actually kind of beating my butt. I'm like, all right, let me actually like. Did you play um, Tekken at all? Nah, uh, not Tekken. Mm. Yeah, Voldo, the twisty game dude. Yeah, that's that's yeah. who I played. Did like crawl like backwards? Yeah, I played him a lot. Yeah, no, but I was actually decent with most characters. He comboed well, but he had weird movements. Yeah. <clears throat> But no, I actually played like the two opposite characters. I played Kiki, who had the pole, and then I played as uh, Talon, who had the the police batana thingies. Oh, I forget what those things are called. I should remember should that. Beat the shit out of people with them. We didn't use those when I was doing karate. I didn't use weapons in karate. It was taekwondo I did, and whatever, mixed martial arts, whatever. Yeah. Uh, um, Nightmare. I don't remember Nightmare. Nightmare was the guy with the big sword, like the main character. Is that? I don't yeah. Know. Um, the other guy I played forever. as the, the guy with the uh, rapier. I remember he was good, too. He was also, he had a really good, like, forward move. Sir, um, I, I remember I really liked Cervantes. Cervantes was What is your guy's really most underrated game of last year? Watch your stream anniversary, because that is those. our number one pick for last year. Because I'm pretty sure that is the most underrated game we played last year. Yeah, 100%. 100%. And we picked it as our number one because... We all enjoyed it. Watch uh, watch our stream anniversary. It's coming up May 19th? Yeah, May 19th. I need to put it on the calendar. Um, I don't remember Soul Calibur 1. Like, I, I, I think Soul playing. Calibur 2 is the pirate looking at. That was Cervantes. He's got the double swords. Yeah. And he made some really weird grunting noises. <laughs> But uh, I remember there was Soul Calibur, I think it was 4, where it had the Star Wars characters built in. one of them over there. It had Star Wars characters, and it depended on what console you had. So one of the consoles had Darth Vader, one had Yoda. Yeah. I think that was really cool. Um, Ivy was always an interesting one. When is the April Fool's for a stream? We're going to be doing our stream on the stream anniversary. Yep, so May 19th. Yep. Um, do you remember Ivy, the one with the uh, chain sword? I was so bad with her. Oh, I, that was horrible with her. So bad. Oh yeah, it was Soul Blade. Soul Soul Blade Soul Caliber. I get them too confused. For a countdown. Can you make a donation goal for a countdown of your best games of the year, best games of all time, etc.? Okay, so for the stream anniversary, we wanted to do our, our best we're, games. Yeah, we're doing a little spoiler alert. So stream anniversary, we're gonna run an a uh, an awards show as part of it. 
So we're going to talk about some of our favorite games. We're going to do kind of like a countdown of our top five favorite games of the year. Yeah. And then we're going to do runner-up and winner. They're going to get prizes. Yeah. And uh, um, we've got some prizes. I'm, like, I don't, I'm not going to spoil the rest. Yeah. So what, one thing, like, we were talking, like, I think we did 24, 25 spotlights last year. Yeah. Something like that. So, like, it's not a huge list of games. And doing a top 10 list or anything didn't seem right because we haven't played. Yeah. But we, games. And there's we so wanted many to show off the top at least two games because one didn't feel like enough. Yeah. We didn't want to reach into the bag of goodies too deep, but uh, number two we felt was definitely an honorable mention. Yeah. So um, our top two games. So, and KDM isn't on the list. We, we excluded that one. We did, yeah. Um, just because. Um, but it was mostly uh, Matt, Ann, and myself we came up with. We went through all the games we played last year. Yeah. Um, it kind of chose what our our favorite was. Um, and uh, we came to a conclusion. On, like, one, we came on a conclusion. With this, the runner-up, we fought a little bit, but not off. much. Um, so, where does Millennium Blades fall on your guys' list of games? I bought it. Table loves it, but I think it could have worked without all the extras. So, Millennium Blades is a... Once in a while, a game for, like yeah. If if I had to rank it of the games we've played last year, I'd say it's top ten, but lower in the top ten. It's it's one of the games that like is overwhelming to play, and like this is something we said in our spotlight. We like it, it's, it's very overwhelming, overwhelming, but that's the point. But that's the point, and it's fun, but like. You have to be in the right mood to play it. Yeah. It's, it's definitely not a casual, let me pick up this um, game and play it. The sub now can drive a car. Please be on the lookout on the roads. <laughs> <laughs> um, Panda, didn't pick re- Panda um, hasn't really played many spotlight games. He, she's only played a handful of and them. And the spotlights that she has been on, she's been mostly proxying. Yeah. yeah. Like, m- most of sh- she sits off the side, so... Uh, apparently, you end ended the, the contest. It, it ended we're, for me. We're doing Orphans and Ash. Uh, Orphans and Ash. Yeah, I, gu- I guess there's a max hour on that. That's cool. So that happened. So we know we're giving away to you guys. Um, so let me go grab that. Okay. Talk Want to go to the op- uh, open copy? We can actually show off what's in the game. Nah. Okay, don't. That's fine. I don't care. It's not my game. It's right there if you want the open copy, Matt, on the bookshelf. I mean, expansion's next to it, too. Skating fans, do you prefer heavier games, or is it anomaly for you and light games are the way to go? Uh, Matt has legs? (sighs) I'm more in the range for a medium weight game. Like... KDM, I, like I, I don't even consider KD, KDM's just like a I don't lot con- of yeah. I don't consider I don't consider it a heavyweight game. Yeah, it's a heavy medium game. Yeah, it's like the heavy is more of like the uh, euro. No, it, it's like the heavy part of it is more just the bookkeeping. Oh yeah, the settlement phase. It's like, just bookkeeping. It's just like bookkeeping. It's not like complicated. It's pretty simple. All right, so this is Orphan and Ashes. This box one's open. Open the damn game, Josh. What's in the box? What's in the box? You put that in card game, maybe? I mean, that, that is in card game. That's what you want for my life. <laughs> okay. So you got your hero. The game of strategic orphan burning. An orphanage on fire in Lagara. What are the odds? Most likely, by coincidence, Richard, chief warlock of the Brothers of Darkness, lord of the 13 hells, etc., is on the scene. Luckily, so is Kael Anon Vate, the greatest hero history has ever known. So. Sure, just show the thing on there. And sh- show that off. Sh- show the logo off or something. That, I mean, <laughs> you're being pleased. <laughs> You're burning orphans. 
So so you play you play as Dick Richard. Yeah. His last name is Head. It's Richard Head. Or you play as Cal, the good guy. And there's little orphans. There's a lot of war. Oh, that's right. I was trying to remember this game. So there's orphans that you're trying to save, and uh, slightly dexterity based, right? And there's there's fires to set the orphans on fire. I used to read the shit out of this comic. So. You guys ever get your hands on endangered orphans of Condyle Coke? Oh god, this is the LFG game. Yes, it's the LFG game. LFG. Uh, looking for a group. Oh, it's a web comic. Yeah. So, so Matt, show show, show all Cal saves the orphans. You gonna narrate this here? So, so he goes. He grabs the orphans from the fires, and he he kind of just puts them on his arms and carries them out. As many as he could fit. As many as he could fit. Because you could you could stack them. Yeah. Like I feel like they they go on better than that, Matt. Like, I'm doing I a like really doing bad job. Really this bad is hard. job. I feel like I'm just bad at. Or this. funky in the camera, yeah. Matt, like I I don't know what the issue is like that. Shut up, Josh. No one Do people still buy the yeah the, the campaign's still open? Like I'm putting putting all the orphans on his arms. Give me more orphans. Give me more orphans there, Josh. Oh no, I dropped one. Okay, so just just talk a little bit more so about this game there. Um, that's that's pretty much all I know Isn't about it. Is there like a cougar that you could play as? Like uh, a that's lion? in the expansion. So the expansion adds uh, uh the the, the more cougar and I forgot her name. Give me more orphans. You got you got her. I want more orphans. There's more dick. <sighs> There's these little shield thingies. Oh, I forgot about the shields. There's a giveaway? Yeah, there's a giveaway. There's, there's a, a giveaway. Guys, if designer, yeah. if you have one. I don't know if I have a favorite designer. Matt, do you have a favorite game designer? I don't know that I could say that I do. I don't know, Joshua. So you're going to copy of this. I haven't really we haven't really played it. We got kind of showed like the game off on stream once. Uh, uh that was at Pax Unplugged, Unplugged in Philly when I was eating Denick's roast pork sandwiches. Okay. So, Josh. Josh, it's Adam. Josh, I think it's time for us to pull the winner of this giveaway. Uh, do you want to put the link in? Because I think it's almost time for us to end the stream. It's time for us to say goodbye to everyone. It's time to say goodbye to everyone. Good night. So we're going to be giving away a Dear copy Wizard of Peoples. Orphans and Ashes, as well as the expansion, the more fun expansion. Uh, so, guys, that's the link in chat. This is your last opportunity to enter. Remember that you could redeem your salt for entries. At salt, you're going to get one salt, or I don't remember how much, but you're going to get milligrams of salt for every minute that you're watching. If you tip, if you throw bits, if you're a sub, you're going to get more salt. That's just how it works. And currently, uh, we are at $2.20 uh, and 36 cents on our giveaway bar, tip bar. Uh, add $11 and a penny to that. So we are at 237 So that means we are at about $63 away from our next giveaway. So that means that we've got one giveaway going. If we get $63 before the end of the month at some point, we're going to be doing another giveaway on the stream for you guys. Uh, remember, subs get more entries into the giveaways, but everyone can enter. So, Josh, I think it's time. Go ahead and close it out. Close it. Close out that beefy goodness. Let's see I who's it. winning it tonight. 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 So, big shout out again Tonight's to Soto Beast. It's going to be a good night. A good night. Uh, that's Tonight's going to be a good night. Um. Oh, Gibberam. Yep, Gibberam. Gibberam, you are the winner this evening of Orphans and Ashes and the expansion. Congratulations. Get that rigged emote going on there. So uh, big shout out to you. 
Uh, I don't know if we've got your details already. If not, please reach out to us in private chat. Send us your stuff. Gigaram even said it was ranked for himself. Nice. I like I it. I don't think we have Gigaram's information. So please send us your personal information, and we will get this game personal out to you. Personal information including social security number and all that. Yeah, yeah social so security number, credit, card, credit number. card number, and yeah. your name. And uh, buy some nice fancy stuff for yeah. the stream. Buy me a nice fur coat. I got that uh, unicorn jacket. I hate you. So with that, we're going to go ahead and uh, we're going to sign off for the evening. So we're, we're coming to the end of the stream now. We hope you guys had a good time on Tangents. It was a lot of fun. Uh, we like talking to you guys, interacting, answering your questions, just having a good time. Yeah. I was going to say maybe Tangents next week, but I am out of town next Thursday. Are you really? Yes, I am at my work thing. You loser. And my social. I hope that's not really your social. Uh, so, guys, stay tuned uh, for all of our upcoming future streams. And the best way to find out about them, though, is to follow us on Facebook, Twitch, Twitter, YouTube, Instagram, and chatting with us on our Discord channel where? Uh, people are poop. I don't know. Join us in our Discord channel where Totino's pizza rolls are the food of choice. Lucy um, is. Lucy's having a bad <laughs> time right now. <laughs> Yeah, I, I don't know what's going on. Dogs are going crazy. Hmm. Mom's spaghetti. What? <laughs> uh, <laughs> but so upcoming streams. Monday, 8 p.m. Eastern time. We got Court of the Dead. Show many. The Maxi. Oh, ferrets. I never showed them the ferrets. Ferrets. Let me go grab a ferret for sign off. Okay. So we've got Court of the Dead going on at 8 p.m. Eastern time. White or black? What? Asking chat, white or black? What? Eminem, yes, that, that that was the reference I was going for. Mom spaghetti. Yada yada yada. Both. Both. Okay. So next week, eight PM Eastern time, we've got our Court of the Dead spotlight. Tuesday, eight PM Eastern time, we're doing our continuation of they're saying black. Uh, we've got our continuation of Twitch Plays Kingdom Death. Uh, we're going into Lent in year twenty two. It's gonna be a lot of fun. Uh, then on, I don't know if there's anything Wednesday next week. Might just be the two streams next week. Uh, sorry, Matt. I'm from the music scene. LOL. Need more death for KDM. You had double death for a while. You can't be greedy. Don't be greedy with the death. Josh is grabbing his... Tube weasels. Sounds bad when I put it that way. He'll be back in just one second. Um, remember, if you've got Amazon Prime, you've got Twitch Prime. So you get one free sub every month. And that means that you can subscribe to our channel. It uh, helps us out by giving us a little bit more funding. Uh, it shows your support. You get to unlock some s cool stuff. You get more entries into all the giveaways. And if you have subscribed before, you get one. Fr uh, you have to redo it every month. Uh, with the one free one. Uh, it doesn't automatically renew, so that's something to keep in mind. Uh, so there's that. Um, it's not a dog, it's a ferret. It's not a dog, it's a ferret. I'm not going to put the ferret in board cam. Put it on board cam. I'm, I'm not going to put him on board cam. Why not? He's a smelly ferret. <laughs> Easy. Uh, but you also, also can buy sleepy. $5 worth of bits for 99 cents. Now make, make it, it sit on its own head. Put it on board cam. Put board cam on. Board cam is on. Oh No, no, board oh, cam. Oh, board cam. Board cam. Board cam. Fair, fair. What's his name? Name Shadow. He, he eats all he wants. He has all the food he can have. He's just a little skinny fur fur. Little skinny fur fur. Say hi, Shadow. You want to yawn for everyone? Go sleepy. Yeah. Don't have those in New Zealand. 
I have another one. He's a white one. His name is Tumble. And I don't have the overlay on, so our names are just going to float on the bottom. Where are you going? <laughs> Wait. Was that Deadpool versus the world? Yep. We're going to play that May 16th. Check out our calendar. Decent characters. Or decent characters. How long have I had the ferrets? Um, make it war dance. Uh, he's got to be like, he, I just woke him up for you guys. He was just asleep. That's why I didn't take both of them out, because they were both, like, passed out, and he didn't get up yet. You are getting old. They're, they, he's old. How old is he? He's sort of like a little bald spot on his butt. It's not yours. Yes, his name is Shadow. They're always sleeping. Yep, that is true. He just wants to go explore. He's like, I have never been here before. What's here? He hasn't been here in a while. Well, you have your own little room. They do have their room. They have more room in this house than I do. How old do they get? Like seven, eight years? He's probably like six. It might be. Like they're getting up there in age. Like they're like they're. How long have I been in this house for? Three years. Four years, maybe? More. It's been about four years. Yeah, so he's probably around seven. So, like, he's getting You near. had them before I met you. I've had them since, like, I got the townhouse, which I think I had the townhouse for three years before I moved out. So. So, they're near the end of their lifespan. They're cute. Yes. Hi. It's gonna keep moving, so you can't fuck. No. <laughs> Stop licking my head, Ferris. <laughs> Two ferrets versus one cat. Uh, when I had the townhouse, the ferrets used to be able to run around more. And they were the alpha animals. They would jump up on the couch and like tell everyone to get off the couch. Dogs, cats. Oh, really? Yeah, it's funny. Uh, that's hilarious. Like, like, no, this is my couch. That's my purse. I don't know you. I have to take right. this call. All right. That's leaving. I'm spaghetti. I don't know why I keep saying it. So what's up, chat? Camera goes crazy and prefers Arby's. They have two cats. Yes. You've only met one, though. Where, where are you going? Boom, 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 boom. Camera comes out really clear. Do the chickens have large talons? Her old ferret has some grand keepers. Where are you going? The other cat looks exactly the same. Josh, you showed the other cat. It looks just like Lucy. It's a smaller white spot on his or her chest. And um, she's very skittish. Spooter cam. Mm. 
Matt, I should get a gr uh, the green screen background for you can do the Muppets. And then I get like a transparent like railing to go in front of us. So it looks like we're in the stands for the, Mupp the Grumpy Muppets. You're a Grumpy Muppet. Scooter cam. All right, so is there anything else we want to talk about tonight? Uh. <laughs> all right, so thank you all for joining us this evening. We went through the whole biz, but uh, come and join us for our future streams, right? Yeah, join right. us for stuff and things. Uh, thank you for joining us for Tangents. Tangents. There's a ferret. We need, a, we need like a, a theme song. Come up on around it's the spot. It's Tangents. It's you, you Tangents. you got to go back to the other screen. It's tangents, it's tangents, we eat tangerines, and we're gentlemen. It's tangents. Okay, this is dumb. Tangents. This is horrible. You asked for it. Uh, I expected something better than... No, you thought wrong. ...than that. I, I expected, like, a tear above. Nah. All right, so thank you all for joining us. Good night, everyone. Bye. Say good night. Good night. Everyone.